All right, San Diego and Southern California, what's going on? It's hour one of John and Jim. We are with you for the next three hours. We're going to talk Super Bowl, Jim. Your Niners are in it. The We're going to have game. Yeah, Leo Luna covers the Niners Bay Area Sports Digest. He's in Vegas. He will join us at 3.30. Coming up at 4.30 today, Carson Field. He covers Air Force basketball. San Diego State is at Air Force tonight. Carson Field, Denver Gazette will join us at 4.30. Our pregame coverage begins at 7. You probably just said that in your update. I wasn't listening. No, I said 6.30. That's wrong. It's at 7. <laughs> pregame coverage will begin at 7. Tip-off is I, I at said, 7.30. I, I, said, I said, know. Said, said. There's a couple of things going on. Obviously, San Diego State basketball, Elf, a big win Saturday, trying to avoid a slip-up on the road here tonight against Air Force. We are five days out. In fact, five days and 30 minutes from kickoff. The Niners, you may know this, are making their eighth Super Bowl appearance. Brock Purdy is the third youngest starting quarterback in Super Bowl history per ESPN. On my screen. So is your level of nervousness increasing as the days go? Or are you just kind of at this point, that's not where you are? Yeah, the, the closer we get to game time, the more nervous I get. Was your birthday a distraction for it? Because yesterday it was, was your birthday and it was sushi. A fantastic distraction. You were able to get away from the Niners. Yes. Would you um, prefer the Niners just weren't in the Super Bowl? So you didn't have to deal with it. <laughs> no, of course not. I want them in the Super Bowl. I'm kidding. No, I, I the closer we get to game time, the more content I consume on this game. Oh, you've been consuming. Oh, I've been consuming. Mm -hmm. I will consume more. Right. Um, the more nervous I will get. Uh, I just, my entire, my brain is just full with Super Bowl, 49ers, Padres. I also have the Cody Rhodes stuff in my head still. Like, there's a lot. Like, it's, gr it's a good distraction um, up until game time. But the closer we get, the, the more nervous I will become. And, and come game day, I'll be a wreck. It'll just be an absolute wreck. Listen, Jim, I've I've told you this before. It's only a game. If they lose, it's know. you know they could have That's another the, opportunity again. Yeah, the, the, they'll they'll still play football next season. Exactly. Win yeah. or lose, it's been a nice year. They're, I'm they're, sure that's what people are going to say. It's not the like the giant lose. meteor is going to come down in a week and a half from now, and everything's going to be gone. Knock on wood. No, hopefully not. Is that supposed to happen? No, it's not. I'm just saying, if that were to happen, then this would be the last Super Bowl in the history of the world. So then that would be like, okay, it's a so you got to win this game or you're never going to have an opportunity ever again. The storylines are so dumb, by the way, out of the Super Bowl that you have, hey, the field is too soft for the Niners practice field. And then I saw something at Pro Football Talk this afternoon. Kyle Shanahan said losing the two Super Bowls that he's coached in before was heartbreaking. Well, yeah, it's the Super Bowl. So, I remember yeah, my losing first... Super Bowls that you have leads in the fourth quarter in, like he's had twice, by the way, in his career, is probably heartbreaking. I remember my first Super Bowl week. No, it's not always... <laughs> Yes, it's always this way, John. This manufactured? Yes. Heartbreaking that I've lost the Super Bowl before. And oh, by the way, the field is too soft. Yes, always. Brent, is it always Super Bowl week where there's stupid stories? Sometimes you get like... And some fabricated stuff. To a certain stuff. degree, yes. There's rarely any time during a Super Bowl week that there's like legitimate news for the actual game other than if there's an injury that people are talking about and is if this guy's going to yeah, play or not. Yeah, that's true. I mean, but this is less newsworthy than the stupid stuff you're talking to me about yesterday during the back page WWE it, honestly, that are manufactured. There, there was more social media buzz and uh, things trending for the WWE over the weekend than there was the Super Bowl. Right. Now but, that's going to go away because we get closer to the game and obviously the Super Bowl is going to be the number one topic. But um, Other than the Padres reporting for spring training on And Sunday. then the Padres will be right there at number three on the list of things trending worldwide. Oh, definitely. All right. So Leo Luna covers the Niners Bay area sports digest. He'll join us coming up at three 30. We found out today. The first baseball projections for the season are out from baseball perspectives. This is a very highly regarded simulation. Pakoda it's called, oh. it is not an end all be all. Let me preface it by saying this Pakoda a year right. ago had the Padres as a 95 win team. So did fan graphs. The Padres ended up winning 80 games. Well, they come out with their initial Pakoda projections for the year. The NL West and the Padres with their two outfielders on their 40-man roster. And this is maybe why they lose a lot of games because there's nobody in left field. But according to the projections, the Padres are supposed to win, per the simulator, 79.7 .7 games. Now, this is 2.3 games less than the number of games they actually won last year, which was 82. Pakoda gives the Padres a 0.8% chance of winning the division. So here we are on February 6th. Pakoda, not us is punting on the division. 
on February 6th. It is giving the Padres a 23.2% chance of winning a wild card spot. It also says the Padres are the fourth best team in the division. LA, number one, 101 wins. Arizona, number two, 85 wins. San Francisco, number three, 81 wins. San Diego, 79.7, round up 80 wins. It says the Padres are the fourth best team in the division. Is anyone taking exception to this? 70470, start it with team or 877-767-4760. It is not an end-all be-all. That's not my point. But the simulations for the season have begun to roll out. It has the Padres a 79.7 wins, fourth place in the NL West. Thoughts? It's not great because these aren't just random projections. They're not just thrown on a piece of paper by some people saying, oh, I think they're going to do this. Like, I think these are projections based off of statistics and raw. Like, a lot of things go into these type of projections, especially for Pakoda. Like it's the, like one of three real ones. Just look at it that way. Okay. Okay. You're right. Yeah. One of it's like if I told you net rankings, it's the same idea. Yeah. Um obviously you preface by saying that these are just projections, and, and you saw what happened last year when the team was projected to win 95, 96, 97 mm-hmm. games, and they won 82. Right. So th- rarely do you see um, these actually hitting on the nose for every, of course, every type of scenario. Actually, it never happens. That never, never happens. That it, there's always like some twists and turns, and there's always teams that outperform projections, and there's obviously always teams that underperform drastically with their projections. Mm-hmm. I, I I do find it interesting the gap from last year to this year as far as projections go. How last year's team was projected to win 95 games, yeah, essentially. essentially around there, right, 95, 96 to this year's team winning around 80. Mm -hmm. Like that is a (laughs) massive gap in projections from one year to the next. And it's like, they still have a lot of talent on this team. It would be one thing if they gutted the entire roster, they traded everybody away and you're dealing with a bunch of rookies and maybe, you know, coupled guys that are names, but you can, you know, like that would be one thing, right? But this is a team you're still talking about with Xander Bogarts and Manny Machado and Tatis and Hassan Kim and Musgrove and Darvish. Like to be then projected this low is kind of a little concerning. Again, it's just projections. They could obviously win 87 games next year. Who cares? Sure. Projections. Everyone will say these are stupid. But what I'm like most interested in and, and fascinated by the most here is how big of the gap is from last year to this year in these projections? Well, I think some of it speaks to what we've said all off season long, which doesn't guarantee wins or losses, but the roster is nowhere near as good. No. So just on its face and baseball games aren't one with rosters. We've watched baseball. Yeah. Sometimes just it is last year. I mean, but sometimes it is. I've seen good rosters that win Houston Dodgers, Yankees, right? I mean, there's examples of good rosters that win. And I think the Padres, by the way, in 2022, had a roster that probably wasn't as good as 2023. They didn't have Fernando Santis Jr. And they were much better in 2022. So to everyone's point, it isn't an end-all, be-all. And what matters is all kinds of things, like the dynamic, like the coaching staff, like a manager, like getting hot, like staying healthy. All of these things do matter. But the truth is this, and I think it's hard to disagree with this. And if you do, again, 877-767-4760 or 70470, start it with team. How can you argue that the Padres roster is anywhere near as good as it was a year ago? It's not even close. And that's why the projections, the analytics, the numbers speak to the Padres being an 80-win team. Doesn't guarantee it. But a year ago, it spoke to them being a 95-win team. Why? Because you add it all up. You look at the war numbers. You look at what Blake Snell's worth. You look at what Josh Hader's worth. You look at what Juan Soto is worth. You add it all up, and you could get to 94, 95 wins. This year... You've lost so much, Jim. You've lost these cornerstone, keystone types. How have they replaced them? I, I'm I'm waiting to find out how they've replaced Juan Soto, Blake Snell, and Josh Hader. I think we've gotten the Josh Hader answer a little bit. It's through like a confluence of relievers. But how are they replacing Blake Snell? How are they replacing Juan Soto? Jury is out. Well, they're not going to, John. There, but, there's, but there'll there's, be someone. There'll be someone in, in their place in left field like and John starting Soto. in the rotation there, there there's no replacement out there for those two guys there's just not right and josh Hader. well maybe you could have 
um, you know, the back end of your bullpen, Robert Suarez, be really good next year for mm-hmm. you, and that's great. But as far as replacing a Cy Young Award winner and Juan Soto, you're just not replacing those guys. Like it's it it shouldn't be about replacing those guys. It's about you know getting guys in here that can produce at the major league level mm-hmm. instead of maybe relying so much on your farm system to do that. But it's uh, it's not it. it Again, it's just a ranking system and it's it's just it's projections and it's stupid because projections are projections, but they do mean a little something. It's it's how everybody views this team right now. It's how these projection sites and whatever their win total is in Vegas or what you know, that's how they view the Padres. And right now, all of these sites view the Padres as a team that is gonna win around 80 games, finish in third or fourth place in your division, and probably miss out on the postseason. Like yeah. that's how people view that's the how Padres. It's like it sets narratives. It's like politics. They show you the polling. The polling doesn't guarantee anything. Right. People have won with polling numbers that are bad, and people have lost with polling numbers that are good. But it does set narratives, and it sets this idea that you know they're like a to your point, a third or fourth place team in the NOS. Well, if they're a fourth place team in the NOS, they're not going to be in the postseason. No. So we know they're going to have to be better than that. We know that there's going to be upgrades. And by the way, what it doesn't account for. And like Darren just had Kylie McDaniel from ESPN on, for example, and it was a really good interview. And you should find it on the iHeartRadio app or at sportsd.com. I really enjoyed it. But what it isn't accounting for, and I really like the style in which Darren was going back and forth with Kylie about this system. This doesn't really account for what the system can produce in 2024. We don't know what the system can produce in 2024. We also don't know this. How reliant do the Padres expect to be on their system in 2024? Now, typically you would think if you're heavily, if you're overly reliant on your system, it's not going to like pay all these dividends in year one, all these rookies. But there's a zillion examples of one player overperforming to help a team go along. Do the Padres have that one player, Jackson Merrill type, that all of a sudden snowballs the team along? I, I can't answer it. I don't think Pakoda can answer it either. Am I skeptical? I am. I am on February 6th skeptical that Jackson Merrill is going to have a five war season and be the contributing factor, the difference to get the Padres over a hump. But it's always a possibility that something like this can't account for. He's never been the big leagues. He's never been a triple A. With this farm system and the players they have in it and the <laughs> the rankings that they are, you know, so highly, you know, excited about, or they're excited about being top five and top two and yep. how many top 100 prospects we have. It is it is the truth that this the 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 future is bright with the Padres as far as farm system talent goes that the that AJ Preller has accumulated. Right. The future is bright. Mm-hmm. Listen to you. Here's where why why it's it's hard to say the future is bright, but also with what's happening this year is the future is bright, and in three four years you can have some guys really hit. But guess what happens in three, four years? Machado's 35. Bogarts is 35. Musgrove won't be here anymore. And Darvish won't be here anymore. So that's the problem. Oh, and by the way, Hassan Kim won't be here either. So when you're saying the future's bright, yes, it is. I agree with you. The, the talent in the system, it, it, it's there. You, we've talked to a lot of people, heard a lot of people talk about this, about this system. Still yet to be seen because the Padres have never produced at such a high level at the majors, but the talent's there. When we're talking about when this talent's going to be really ready to perform, it's going to be at a time when the, the, the stars that you have in place right now on the roster aren't going to be in their prime anymore or even be here. Potentially. Yeah. That's a possibility if it takes three or four years. And, but then also there's the possibility that, yeah, you don't have um, four years from now, you don't have name the player. Uh, you Darvish, you don't have Joe Musgrove, Joe Musgrove, because his deal's over in yeah. four years. But then you've actually now, now you have tens of millions of dollars additionally. True. Right. So it's, and it's hard to say that this class of player will fully develop three or four years from now. That That's a little bit of a long outlook potentially for the class, like three or four years. I mean, I don't really know how long it's going to take, but you're right. Like pairing your young core with Machado and Bogarts specifically mm-hmm. seems a bit off because they're going to be like 15 years apart yeah. in age. What you would have hoped is that this year or even next year, but preferably this year 
is when this wave, the hot talent lava, even though that hot talent lava turned out to be like nothing. You hope that the wave would come up this year to pair with the veterans, to pair with the superstars, and that 2024 was going to be a, a really good year for the veterans, the superstars that are already on this roster, paired with the young talent. Well, maybe it's maybe that is their plan. Maybe it is. You know, I mean, we've talked about it. So maybe being, it is. being completely serious, I don't know if they're ready for it, but maybe that is their well, plan. Well, that's the key question is, are they even ready for it? We it's don't know. It's hard to answer. It's hard, it is hard to answer, except I just go from what everyone else says that you know knows more baseball than I do and covers the minor leagues more than I do, saying that, hey, these guys, really good, talented players, but uh, yeah, they're not ready yet. It, Kylie McDaniel, McDaniel's not saying that. Well, okay. I and I mean he's the one that ranked them with the fourth best system in baseball. I'm not saying he's saying that they're all ready to contribute day one, but he's not saying that they're not fully ready. Well, Kyle Glazer says they're not. I know, but that's the thing with it. It's an opinion based system, yeah. and this goes back to like what you said even a year ago. You're like, well, Corbin Carroll was regarded with Arizona higher than some of these guys, or more fully cooked, more developed, and therefore he paid dividends. But was that really the perception heading into last year that Corbin Carroll was going to carry? The Arizona Diamondbacks, was that the belief? Was that the expectation? I don't think uh, carry them to a World Series, but I think to come up. And Even to get to the postseason? Well, it's about just the player, not the team. Like The player, I think everyone thought Corbin Carroll's going to be a stud. Turned but out to people be. People have said, uh, and again, I, I'd have to look at it. I haven't done the deep dive on Corbin Carroll and what he was doing in the minor leagues, but I'm saying there are examples, and a lot of them, of young players coming up and contributing, even if you don't think that it's possible. I'm one of the skeptics. I'm just saying it's possible that the Marcy Merrill Pauly type contributes in a big way this year and they need it to happen. It's also possible it doesn't happen, but that's where I think some of the thought process on this team is like, they're, they're not a complete roster. What are they going to do? How are they going to do it? They're going to rely on their system is what they're going to do. Are they not? Does anyone disagree with that? They're going to rely on their system for some of these roles in 2024. Absolutely. So that's that's the plan. I would I'd be surprised if it wasn't part of the plan. I, I would be too. It's just is that plan going to work? We'll find out. We will find out, right? And the more that the, the you the later we get here in the off season, which we have what? 5 days left before pitchers and catchers report. <laughs> Amazingly, yeah. Okay, and they have no left fielder or center fielder on their roster. I mean, I guess they can put a Jose Zocar out there, but you get my point. Mm -hmm. Um the more reason that is to believe that they're going to go pretty youth movement on this like they're going to probably lean heavily into this system. Mm -hmm. And they're they're going to sink or swim. Like that's that's the facts here. Is with them going full youth movement with guys that might not be ready, right? With guys that may be rushed through the system right. too soon and guys that we've never really even maybe heard of before. They're going to either sink or swim. And I I personally don't think Preller has time to to see them potentially swim their way up right. to to you know float and and you know be be like be good and and see the fruits of his labor here and see that this system actually blossom. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think he has time to do that. That's right. why it's very risky when you are putting yourself in a position where you're counting so heavily on a farm system that might not be fully ready yet to produce at the major league level, mm -hmm. because you got to win now, especially after what's happened in the last four years. Like there's no, Hey, yeah, you get another three years. Like I, agree. I, I just don't see it. That's why it's such a risky move to rely so heavily on a farm system that might not be ready yet. And maybe they are, and that'd be awesome. I think that's what everybody wants to see. Everybody wants to see their own through the system and develop at the major league level, right? Everyone wants to see that. But the odds of it happening here in San Diego so far have not been good. No, not under Preller. Like, just looking at Carroll, by the way, and he's probably unique. I'm not saying Merrill is Corbin Carroll. But Carroll in the minor leagues had 657 plate appearances yeah. before appearing in the big leagues. Now, he was a college guy. He was 22. Well, yeah. Merrill's going to be 21. And by the way, Carroll had better minor league numbers give me some, than give me his numbers. in the minors. They're I mean, really good. Okay, I, I know. That's what I'm saying. Like, they people, were very people, good. People viewed Corbin Carroll as the guy that's going to be 1,000 OPS. Yeah, yeah. He, the, everybody said 
yeah, dude, this guy's going to be a stud. And guess what? Fair. He's a stud. Fair. But nobody's saying that Merrill won't is my point. Well, no one's saying that Merrill will either. Well, he's a top like 10 prospect in baseball. Yeah, with right? a 770 OPS. Numbers. I know. I agree. I'm saying he's got more to prove in the minors than Carroll had to prove because he had proven it. It would change more. a lot of things if 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 uh, Jackson Merrill's numbers in the minors were, were a thousand OPS. Yeah. Yeah. OK, I'm with you on that. I'm completely with you on that. All right. Leo Luna, Bay Area Sports Digest, covers the Niners. He is in Vegas. He'll get us ready for Sunday. Also still ahead. We'll cover tonight's Aztecs game at the Air Force Academy. Carson Field, he covers uh, the Air Force Academy for the Denver Gazette. He'll join us coming up at 430. We'll talk some Super Bowl on the other side. Stay with us on John and Jim. All right, the big game is here, and you've got the perfect place to watch it over at Novo Brazil locations. I'm talking about Otay Ranch Mall. It's a spectacular place. IB is now open. That is a huge, huge place and a spectacular place as well. Mission Valley, we've been telling you about it here for the last couple of weeks since opening up. And while watching the big game, you can support San Diego State student-athletes by ordering the Aztec Raspberry Kombucha during the big game. Novo Brazil Restaurants. In three locations across San Diego County, I just told you, Otay Ranch Mall, IB, and their newest location in Mission Valley, which is spectacular, 350 seats, 60 taps of beer, indoor, outdoor. So again, if you're looking for a spot for the big game, make sure to consider Novo Brazil Brewing. Their food, their drinks, their viewing options are unbelievable. You got to see some of these viewing options, the LED screens, the sound systems, it's the best place to watch the big game this year. It's a great environment, by the way, for families as well with, again, everything they've got, the homemade food, the huge LED screens, all the award-winning drinks we've talked about, and they've got activities for children as well. Novo Brazil and Novo Kombucha, proud supporter of the Mesa Foundation, San Diego State men's and women's basketball. Again, this newest flavor taste tested by San Diego State student-athletes, Shane Ladee, Lamont Butler, Micah Parrish, and others. You're getting ready for the big game. Make sure to enjoy it over at Novo Brazil Brewing. Again, Novo Brazil Brewing with their locations, IB, Otay Ranch, and the newest one in Mission Valley. Check them out this weekend.
All right, this update is brought to you by Staples Stores. The Aztecs, they're back in action tonight on the road to take on Air Force. 7.30 tip-off time, 7 p.m. pregame right here on San Diego Sports 760. Staples print big sale means the more you print, the more you save. Get $20 off your print purchase of 100 or more, 50 off your print purchase of 200 or more, and 100 off your print purchase of 300 or more. Ends 21024. See staples.com slash print big for details. Print more, save more at Staples. All right, Leo Luna is out in Vegas, Bay Area Sports Digest. Jim is nervous. People are getting ready. Big yeah. game Sunday, very big game. Is it a must-win game? You John? could argue it is for both Kansas City and San Francisco. Leo, we appreciate you taking us uh, taking time for us here in San Diego. Set the scene for us. I know you're out in Las Vegas, first ever Super Bowl in Sin City. What's it like in the lead to this, uh, this event? Oh my God! Well, first off, absolutely, that's hilarious. Um, yes. uh, the atmosphere is, is wild. Basically, everything you want in the Super Bowl. Uh, I was there last year in Phoenix, which you know, it was nice and everything, but it's not comparable to being here in Las Vegas. Literally, everything around the corner, anything that you want. So it's fantastic. Definitely took it all in with us. Super Bowl week always. You, know, you have some crazy stories maybe come out or some, some things that people don't really care about because we have to have time leading up to the game. So sort of for this year, uh, what's the biggest story that has come out so far in Super Bowl week that's kind of like, eh, this is a little weird? Um, I would say, you know, I think it's really definitely that's a little weird. Um, just because it's like the NFL – Leo Luna with us right now. He covers the Niners for Bay Area Sports Digest. So has it been addressed? I saw the headline yesterday. We kind of laughed it off a bit yesterday. But what are the Niners doing or how is it being throughout the course of the week? They're just going to have to go through it. They're um, like the Kansas City Chiefs said, no, like we're not willing to, you know, plan basically and, and manage the schedules of the two teams. You guys got your luck of the draw, and we're going to continue with the Oakland Raiders, or excuse me, Las Vegas Raiders facilities. And uh, the 49ers are, you know, they, they got the hand, and they got to play with it. I thought one of the weirdest things after the championship game for the 49ers was the fact that they were addressing lack of effort on defense from Steve Wilkes to Chase Young to Fred Warner. Uh, have you ever seen a team after a championship game, you know, dress the of effort that they're showing on the defensive side. And, and so far, like, do you have any concerns about Sunday and that this may pop up again with this defense and potential lack of effort on some plays? I think anybody should have a concern because you're probably discussing about a lack of effort in the NFC championship game. Every, every single player here is talking about all the scenarios for that team. Let's just say this win and then we move on to the Super Bowl. Um, so you have that conversation in your free game season, you can still go out here and kind of walk through what he's doing this week. Um, so yeah, it, it should be a concern, but it sounds like this is uh, you know, a, a, the number one thing on the whiteboard to where I'll be shocked uh, if, if you're still continuing to see people walk through the run pursuit um, on the field. And my biggest thing from that is when you had Robert Sala as a DC, it was all gas, no breaks. When you had D'Amico Ryan to use swarms where everybody just the football. Um, so with Steve Hill, he doesn't really have that little, you know, trendy acronym that it, that he's going with. Um, so 
the defense has done a fantastic job over the years getting to the football. That last game, I don't think that's quite the representation of the team. But until you go out there and see them play on Sunday, I think it should be on everybody's mind. Leo Luna is with us right now. We're previewing Super Bowl 58, Vegas, Lincoln Stadium, Niners and Chiefs. He works for the Bay Area Sports Digest. All right, finish this sentence, or I guess address this. If Brock Purdy does this, the Niners win. If Brock Purdy does not turn over the football, the 49ers will win. So manage the game. So if he manages the game effectively, the Niners will win. He doesn't have to go beyond that. He doesn't have to throw for 300 yards or two or three touchdowns. No. No, I don't think so. Because I, how I look at it is this, this is going to be a heavy defensive effort game. Um, both offenses, like 49ers, it's, it's crazy because you have Patrick Mahomes on the other side, but the 49ers have been by far the more superior offense. The Chiefs haven't put up 30 points since November. Granted, you know, playoffs, you could throw that out the window, Super Bowl especially. Um, but the 49ers, they had a couple 40-point games in the month of December. They had 34 points last week. So there's more high-powered offense. Um, that being said, they didn't play the Kansas City Chiefs defense in this game. So if Brock Purdy is able to just not turn over the football, I think he has the skills that he's talented enough where if he doesn't turn over the football, the 250 passing yards, uh, two passing touchdowns, that stuff's going to come. But with him not turning over the football, it, it's just going to eliminate basically the Chiefs getting extra possessions, and that's the last thing you want to do for Patrick Mahomes. Do you get a sense that this game plan for the Niners this week on offense has to be and will be a heavy dose of Christian McCaffrey? Because, you know, the last two games, for the Niners, have been a lot of pass, like especially against the Packers and the Lions because, you know, the, their run defense run defenses were really good. You look at this Chiefs team, run defense isn't that great. They have a really good pass defense. So would you be shocked if, like, within the first two series, Christian McCaffrey doesn't get the ball, like, almost every play? Um, No, I won't be shocked, honestly. Kyle Shanahan has a lot of trust in Brock Purdy, and he has a lot of trust in what he's called uh, as far as the head coach goes. When the 49ers went to the Super Bowl the last time, where he most hurt, went crazy in the NFC Championship game. Some Super Bowl, he didn't get one carry. Um, so Kyle Shanahan is definitely looking for mismatches in, in certain ways. Now, do I believe he could try to keep Christian McCaffrey the ball every single play? 100%. He's by far the best, most effective player from the non-quarterback position we've seen this season. Maybe outside of Tyreek Hill, that's the only guy you would consider that was a non-quarterback. Um, but Kyle Shanahan, he he has a lot of faith in Brock Purdy. Um, so I I won't be shocked, essentially, if they don't give Christian McCaffrey, say, four runs out of the first five snaps, um, although I think they should. Leo, appreciate your time. Looking forward, obviously, to Sunday. Jim has his fingers crossed, like literally. I don't know, and, I don't know if he's going to be here Monday <laughs> if the Niners don't win. Yeah. Yeah, I and will. last thing here is I told Fred Warner yesterday, he did not know, but he's going to be the first San Diego linebacker, middle linebacker to start two Super Bowls because Junior Seau did not start the second one for the Patriots. Wow. How about that? That's a good little did nugget you know that, right there. Jim? Uh, I didn't know that, but now I do. So that's good to know. Love it. <laughs> and all of our listeners know as well. Leo, appreciate it, man. Enjoy the week out in Las Vegas. Thanks for hopping on in San Diego today. Of course. Appreciate you guys. All right. Leo Luna, Bay Area Sports Digest. Uh, Brock Purdy, if he manages the game effectively, doesn't turn it over, the Niners will win the Super Bowl. You agree with that? No turnovers, they win? Here, Simple as that? If you tell me the stat line for Brock Purdy is 17, like just, I don't care about like the yardage or whatever. If you'd say, all right, Brock Purdy's 17 for 23 passing. Okay. I think the Niners win that game. If he's 17 to 23, that probably means they've run the ball a lot. That means they were very successful with the run. Mm -hmm. They weren't trailing. Because if you see a, a, a line where Birdie's like 24 for throws. 38, yeah. then you're like, okay, something some of the went sure. wrong there. Yeah, I could see that. But I agree if, with if that. he is like 17 for 23 or 18 for 25, then they've run it 35 Then times. they have run it a lot. Yep. He said he, he said he can't turn it over. So if he throws like a pick on the opening drive, are you going to go watch Mean Girls or are you going to tough it out? Well, that's a good question, Brent. Uh, depends if the 
Niners are already down seven nothing or not. Didn't you see Depends Mean if Girls? It's just a normal pick or a pick six, right? Didn't you see Mean Girls last week when they were down twenty four seven? Or what did you see? Then? I saw Wonka actually. So Wonka, it's a great movie. Yeah, what happened in that game? How are the Niners here? All right. Speaking of Vegas, the Vegas mayor chimes in on something that isn't Super Bowl related, but is sports related. We'll have that for you on the other side. Plus, still ahead at four thirty, Carson Field. Covers the Air Force basketball team for the Denver Gazette. San Diego State is at Air Force tonight at 7.30. Our pregame coverage will begin at 7 p.m. Stay with us on John and Jim. All right, you're getting ready for the big game. All those game day needs, tailgating and watching needs. Windmill Farms has you covered. Everything you need from a grocery perspective, organic farm fresh produce and meats, amazing beer selection, craft beer, everything you could possibly imagine they have for you, plus much, much more. They're centrally located right off the freeway from Montezuma Mesa, located off Del Cerro Boulevard, This is your spot to get ready for the big game. In addition to that, during your work week, there's no better spot or easier, more convenient spot for lunch than Windmill Farms. Head over to their deli, easy parking, quick in and out access, pick up a sandwich card. Your eighth sandwich is going to be free. They have everything under the sun from a sandwich perspective, high quality ingredients, low, low prices. I've been telling you, they really pride themselves on their low prices. They're family owned. They serve San Diegans. That's what Trevor and his family have been doing for 20 plus years. In addition to that, you don't even have to live or work near the college area. You can find Windmill Farms on Instacart. And through Instacart, just have your groceries delivered directly to your doorstep. Is there anything really easier than that? They support local businesses, Harris Ranch, Mr. G Salsa, and more. They have weekly specials, including this week for the big game at windmillfarmsmarket.com. Again, windmillfarmsmarket.com. And a reminder to San Diego, shop local, shop at Windmill Farms.
Juve has an agreement five years with the Astros, an extension five years, 125. The Astros tweeting out he will finish his career. With the Astros, Clayton Kershaw back to the Dodgers. One year deal, team option for a second year. He's been hurt. He's not even going to pitch until the second half of the year. Did, didn't anyone tell these teams you're only allowed to sign players to 14 year contracts? Right. Are you even allowed to sign players? Did you did, in this quiet offseason that you mentioned that, Brent? Um, did you see what Ken Rosenthal wrote the other day? I that we talked about. We did not. Well, we didn't fully talk about it. What was it? It was the article about the Kansas City Royals and Bobby Witt. Yes, it was. It wasn't the Padres tidbits in that article, by the way. And then awful announcing came out and said that Ken Rosenthal was getting roasted for his Bobby Witt Jr. article about praising the Royals for oh yeah keeping young talent when. The Padres signed Fernando Tatis Jr. to a 14-year deal. Is this sustainable? Is this sustainable? Small market team. Right. Right. I, I, I mean, No, I'm with you on that. I'm with you. you Give me a break. I mean, I will say this. The Royals aren't anywhere near what the Padres did under Seidler, but they have seemingly tried this mm-hmm. offseason investments in veteran pitching, yeah. plus locking up their, you know, the key piece Star of their player. future in Bobby Witt. Junior to a long term, what, 280, 290 million dollars? A huge I think, deal. I think it could be over with like escalators, like over 300 million. Uh, for Kansas City, it's like yeah. a billion dollar deal for them. So they've never done anything like that. But I just thought it was, um, you know, Ken Rosenthal writing that piece yesterday and then getting absolutely roasted, rightfully so, because when you praise one small market team for doing something and then another small, I guess, quote, small market team and the Padres do the exact same thing just, yep. you know, no, four years point. ago and you roast them for it or you ask the question, is it sustainable? I, give me a break. Like, that's a joke. I agree with you. By the way, we talked to the first segment about these Pakoda, these baseball projections for the upcoming year. And it says Padres 80 wins and 24% chance of making the postseason. We should note, we kind of reference it. A year ago, it said 94 wins, 88.6% chance of making the postseason when it first came out. So maybe so it it's going to be the off. opposite of last year. It's always possible. <laughs> it's always possible. We should preface by saying that it was dead wrong. And you did. You're like, the thing's never, it's not going to hit on all 30 teams. No. You, but you know, the Dodgers are going to be up there unless something yeah, like dramatic happens. But do we need Pakoda to tell us that? We know no, that. No, we don't. Right. We don't. I, I almost look at it not. As oh, the people think they're a fourth place team. I look at it as this is how the Padres are viewed, and the gap is so wide from last year to this year. Good point. Because a year ago, I'm glad you mentioned that. Because a year ago with the Dodgers, the gap was like insignificant. Yeah. Right? Like in terms of the projections, it was like one projection site would have the Padres with like one more win, and one yeah. site would have the Dodgers with like one more win. Because it was quote a down year maybe for the Dodgers. So Pakoda initially a year ago said the Dodgers were going to go 97 and 65. And it said the Padres would go 94 and 68, but it gave the Padres a 35% chance of winning the division this year. 0.8 from yeah. 35% chance of winning the division to a 0.8% chance yeah. of winning the division. Projections are projections. Yep. They're stupid, but I view it more from a lens of this is how the Padres team is viewed by these projection sites in Las Vegas and and they're viewed as just an average baseball team. Yeah. Right now, you know, and it's not like every single year, these projections are going to be just so wildly off. Like they were last year for the Padres, you know, 94 wins to 82 wins. Like that's a massive wild gap there. I'm not also saying that the Padres can't find a way to win 85, 86 uh, games and get into the postseason. I'm just looking from last year, to this year, it, it just, it's telling that, uh, this roster is not even as close to it was last year. Hopefully they play better. I know. I agree with you. So the Las Vegas mayor, you would think Super Bowl week would be spending a lot of time on the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah. She was on a podcast and the conversation turned to the future of the A's. Mm-hmm. Here's the direct quote from the Vegas mayor, Carolyn Goodman on the A's. They've got to figure out a way to stay in Oakland. This is the mayor of Las Vegas. During Super Bowl week. It's an awful look. A a series of awful looks, obviously, for the A's. They've literally become like vagabonds here. Like, what is going to happen with the A's? There's no solution in Oakland. Vegas doesn't even necessarily want them. The A's ownership is a mess. Yes, there's (laughs) that. 
what is going to happen with the A's? The train wreck gets worse seemingly by the day. John Fisher has now taken the uh, title of biggest buffoon owner in all of major major sports. All, uh, he may have already had it. <laughs> may have already had it. There's a couple up there. Dan Snyder, now gone. Dean Spanos, he's irrelevant, but he mm-hmm. landed on his feet. Shocker. Um, but John Fisher <laughs> has to be right now at the top of the food chain when it comes to incompetent doofus owners in all of sports. I don't uh, find me another one that has is more incompetent than this guy. Pakoda has him at the top. And that would be a good projection. Right. Yeah. Probably, probably says it's right. When you have two cities saying they don't want you. <laughs> I mean, good luck. You have no political, you know, backing, no political willpower, no political yeah. savviness, nothing. You can't get anything done on your own. You you're a billionaire, but you never want to spend or invest in this team. Nobody cares about you in, in Las Vegas, all of your fans in Oakland, you have drove away because you don't care about them at all. So all those fans are gone. You are, you're in a spot where I feel like major league baseball is going to have to step in and force him to sell this team. Because what alternative That's do they have? Point. By the way, she also went on to say the A's Tropicana site. And again, the Tropicana has closed. The A's Tropicana site, quote unquote, does not make sense. <laughs> this yeah. is the mayor of the city in which the team is supposedly moving to, which has all types of tax benefits for the city of Las Vegas. And he's saying, you know what? Can you figure this out elsewhere? Because we don't want the A's on the strip at the Tropicana site. It doesn't make sense. And everybody that covers the A's. Has has so far called this to a T that True. hey we know that it was unanimous vote to to allow the A's to relocate to Las Vegas, but there's no plan, there's no renderings, there's no backing, there's no uh, financial plan, there's no plan for this team to go to Las Vegas. So anybody thinking that this is a done deal just because they got approved to to relocate to Vegas, uh, you don't know John Fisher. She then took to social media later today, adding context to her comments, saying she is excited about the prospect of Major League Baseball, but said that Oakland and the A's should try to make their relationship work in a perfect world. Should that fail, Las Vegas has shown that it is a spectacular market for Major League Sports franchises. What on earth is happening? The A's are an absolute dumpster fire, train wreck, clown show. So even in her clarification, she's like, well, yeah, I I meant it. Mm -hmm. I meant it. I mean, they should try again in Oakland. I guess if it doesn't work out, we could consider it. And I feel so bad because that fan base, it's it's a very good fan base. Yeah, but it's been eroded now. Well, it is because John Fisher has done that. that, I agree. But it's all because of John Fisher. you, you You can't put the genie back unless you sell the team in Oakland. There's no way. No. But I guarantee uh, if they if he sold that team and they got something done in Oakland with a competent owner, they their fans would come back easily. No question about it. Just right, like the right. same thing with like the Chargers, Chargers we're talking about, yeah, right? You're right. So it's all about John Fisher. Yeah. He is the buffoon clown in the room. And he is destroying this team and franchise. And it's crazy to me how baseball isn't stepping in. I know. It's an awful look. You know, it's obviously a bad look on the A's and and John Fisher. It's a really bad look for baseball. This is buffoonery. This is the circus has come to town to Major League Baseball. During Super Bowl week in the town that has the Super Bowl with every single major media outlet there. And the Oakland A's are are basically... It's the biggest story. It's it's the the mayor of your city is like, yeah, you know what? We don't really want them. They should just stay home. We don't want them. That is... Oh, my God. That is the worst look possible. It really is. All right. The wrap is on the other side at 430. Carson Field, he covers the Air Force basketball program for the Denver Gazette. He'll join us because San Diego State is at the Air Force Academy tonight at 730. Our pregame coverage will begin at 7 p.m. Hour two, John and Jim. That's next.
This update is brought to you by Staples Stores. Aztecs back in action tonight, this time on the road versus Air Force. 7.30 tip-off time. 7 p.m. is when our pregame coverage starts right here on San Diego Sports 760. Staples print big sale means the more you print, the more you save. Get $20 off your print purchase of 100 or more, 50 off your print purchase of 200 or more, and 100 off your print purchase of 300 or more. Ends 210.24. See staples.com slash print for details. Print more, save more at Staples. All right, San Diego and Southern California, what's going on? This is hour two of John and Jim. We do have Aztecs basketball tonight, as Jim theoretically just said. I wasn't listening, but I was getting ready uh, for tonight at 7.30. San Diego State at the Air Force Academy. Our pregame coverage will begin at 7 p.m. Carson Field covers the Air Force basketball program for the Denver Gazette. He will join us coming up at 4.30. Uh, By the way, we see your texts that are coming in. We'll try to get to some of these. 70470. You can start your message with the word team. Again, 70470. Start it with the word team. Um, okay. So is there anything that's popping out to you here on the text line? I think what we have said about talking about projections today, you know, okay. projections are BS. Case in point, the 2023 Mets from a uh, 619 number. Well, but the 2023 Padres. Uh, 858 number says, I think lower uh, predictions give them incentive. Yeah. That's a good one. Maybe. Could. Could. You know, with with a with a team that has no expectations, or at least the expectations compared to last year are complete night and day. Mm-hmm. Maybe they'll go out and they'll play better baseball. You know, maybe they will be more fundamentally sound. Maybe they will be better in one run games. <laughs> Knock on wood, there. Right. Maybe they'll be better in extra inning games, and maybe they'll be a team that isn't statistically one of the worst teams with hitting and runners in scoring position throughout the entirety of a season. Yeah, 619 saying if the Padres win 50% more extra inning games, they're in the 2023 playoffs. Sure, yeah. A lot of and ifs. if I found a lottery ticket on the floor right. to, that had a right code for $100 million, then I'd be rich out of here. Oh, great. That's and rich. Great. Yeah. Then I hope it doesn't happen. <laughs> All right, again, we'll gonna. talk about tonight's San Diego State and Air Force coming up at 430 with Carson Field from the Denver Gazette. But right now, let's get to this. Does Clay Kershaw still have any gas left in the tank? What are you looking at me like that? Did you erase my rap questions? <laughs> you did. Well, first of all, okay, hit, hit pause in the music. <laughs> hit pause in the music. This is a good segment. I know what you're going to say. Well, usually yeah, I've I never, never see you do I, it. You've never, you could go 12 days without opening this file. No, I do open it every single day, John. Okay, you could go 12 days without writing a a up like period or like a letter. I do write all the time. All the time. All the almost every all, time. All the time. You being honest? Not so I know sometimes every What time. was in it? Give me something that was in it. Let's put it in. I forget. You forget. I think one of them was the cliche is tonight a must win game for the Aztecs. Again, see thank thankfully I raised the questions. We asked that yesterday. Well, today's the game, John. I know, but we asked it yesterday. I forget what else I put in there, but I put questions in. Well, we'll put that in, actually. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get back to it. <laughs> what was the first question? Yeah, what oh. was the question? Does Clayton Kershaw have anything left in the tank? Probably. He has the time, and he's afforded the time, take as much time mm-hmm. as he needs before he gets back. Um, there's no rush for him. There's nothing that will, there's no pressure to come back soon for this team because they're stacked and loaded. It's a perfect scenario for Clayton Kershaw. He can take all the time he needs, get back in like August, right? have like five to 10 starts and probably be very ready for the postseason run. You're probably right. I'm going to say he's done. And here's why. Washed, cook. Yeah, because coming over. off shoulder surgery at his age with that many innings, I'm going to bet against him. Sucks. I mean, I could Loser. be proven wrong, but shoulder surgery, 36, a million innings on his arm. No, I mean, the playoff numbers have just been bad after bad after bad. Are you really going to count on this guy in the 2024 postseason if you're the Dodgers and you have to win the World Series? I mean, he's really going to pitch off shoulder surgery, making eight starts in the regular season. Hmm. Like, what game is he pitching for you? What game is he pitching? He's probably not pitching any games. <laughs> exactly. For you. So I, I think he's done. I really do. I could. I, that's 
That's my thought. All Next right. Next question. It's cooked. Over. Cy Young. <laughs> Cy Young. Rick Next. Pitino says college basketball needs a salary cap. Do you agree? Dude, all of college athletics needs some type of salary. These, these players, uh, do you see what Shadur Sanders and Shiloh Sanders did for their dad? Bought him a brand new mansion in Colorado. I did, I did see that. Yeah. Look nice. And Sh- uh, Shadur is driving around in like a uh, Bentley and in fashion shows, missing practice. So is that, are we saying, oh, it should be capped? That's there has to be some regulation here because you are getting into a situation. It's already happening. It's the it's the wild wild west when mm-hmm. it comes to um, recruiting and when it comes to nil. Who has the most money? Who's going to be the most money? And where can I go? And and really, kids could transfer every single year mm-hmm. if they wanted to to like four different colleges and make money at those four different colleges if they choose to. Yeah, but I mean, I'm I understand what you're saying. I, I don't know if it needs to be capped though. It's like, okay, so it's it's not capped now. Is the biggest spender always the biggest winner, I guess? It's not about the it's not about that though. But isn't it a free market society? I mean, you could work in four different jobs in four years. So why can't they at this point? I said, what's different? I I, I 10 years ago I get it, but now like it's a free market society. Like what why not, I guess? Well, it's different because it's a sport. Yeah, and just like Clayton Kershaw could sign every year for a hundred million dollars if he wanted, right? It's based on whatever he's worth. You're right, <laughs> but I think in college athletics, you see how it is making the product nowadays, and how everything is changing to a point where some schools can't even compete. Right. I think they, I think they need it just so we don't have a situation like we had in Tennessee, where they had six different. I don't know, I'll call them booster groups for lack of a better mm-hmm. term, but six different booster groups that were all funneling in. And each of these groups, you know, they could fund six or 12, you know, other colleges just by themselves. Right. So I don't know if they need a salary cap, but they need something to keep the Alabamas of college from having just an enormous, they're already having an advantage over like, you know, San Diego state or a smaller school, but you have to have some reason to, you have to have something that keeps it from, you know, one school, oh, we can spend $20 million on a quarterback, and then one school can barely spend twenty grand on a quarterback. There has to be some sort of it's a tough situation. way to ring it yeah. in. Yeah, no, I mean, I think it, it does make sense. I mean, there probably should be additional guardrails. I just wonder how they're going to do it. Yeah, I don't think they're going to be able to do it. Yeah, I, maybe they will. I, I just, I don't know. It's above my head. It's above my pay grade, certainly. All right, next question. Yes, let me know. Do you think Andy Reid will retire after the Super Bowl? I don't. I don't. You don't retire from that situation with Patrick right. Mahomes in his prime and the situation you have in Kansas City where you dominate the AFC every single year. We know, guess what? Next year, they're probably going to win the AFC West again. It's just put it down on paper. It's over with. Like right. You don't walk away from that. Now, if Patrick Mahomes was kind of at the end of his career, like a Tom Brady situation with the Patriots, even though Belichick decided he wanted to prove Tom Brady wrong, mm-hmm. um, then you think about it. Then it's then it's on the table discussion wise. This right now, zero percent chance. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, first of all, he's only sixty five. He's won two hundred fifty eight games. He's absolutely getting to three hundred. He could finish his coaching career with five plus Super Bowls. Yeah, he's got two. He's gotten them in the last couple of years with Mahomes. Who's to say he doesn't get two, three, four, five, seven more? Nobody knows. It could be zero more. It could be five more. But you're a spot on to have this mid-career superstar. Not even mid. It's only six years in. He'll probably play 15 to 20 years. How old is Mahomes? 26, 27? Yeah. 28 maybe? I don't think he's 28. Brent's looking it up. I'm going to say 27. Which is incredible if that's the case. How old is he, Brent? 28. That, that's not what I'm looking at. He's 28. Okay. So, so that's amazing. I mean, your prime as a quarterback is like at least through age 35 season. That's it, not what I was looking up. I was looking up to see Belichick doesn't have a job anymore. So if Reed sticks around, he's just going to pass Belichick. Become the winningest coach. Well, he's going to pass Belichick at least. So he could. He's at 258. He needs 328. Yeah, so, it's not that far. No. Yeah. Yeah. Andy Reed's going nowhere. Yeah, I agree. Next question. Is tonight a must-win game for the Aztecs? Oh, I like this question. It's it's, a, it's my That's favorite good. question. Yeah. It's evergreen. How could I have deleted that content? Man, I feel bad. I hate you. 
What's uh what's what's a, what quad game is this tonight? Quad three, it's quad, funny you quad ask. four. It's um how do I explain this to you, Jim? <laughs> it's technically as the game starts a quad four game, but if you were to lose the game, which nobody wants to see, it becomes a quad three game. Do you understand why? Because they're gonna move up. So Oh, Air Force? Yeah, like yeah. the second the game tips off, it's quad it's four. against a quad four game. If San Diego State wins, they have a quad four win. If they lose, they have a quad three loss. Got it. It's weird because they're right on the cut line. What have I said all year? When you play teams that are quad four, quad three, those are must win. Just for your resume alone. So yeah, you gotta win tonight. Can't lose again. Can't lose on the road to Air Force. Um especially after their really good win versus Utah State this past weekend. Yeah, no, I'm with you. And I don't think it is near as... And you're getting into a stretch here where you go play again, Colorado State, New Mexico. Well, Nevada Friday night. Nevada. Like, these are some tough games coming up here on your schedule. Got to take care of business first, an Air Force team that's not really good. I think it's really tricky. I really do. San Diego State having played Saturday. I don't think they practiced on the floor yesterday to save legs. They traveled. They had a three-hour delay yesterday traveling. They're playing at 8.30 Mountain Time. I think it's a very tricky game. Um, Brian Dutcher was quoted by Mark Ziegler saying something similar, like, you know, we need to play to our ability to win the game. So, you know, Air Force beat UNLV this year by 32 points. The three balls and equalizer, Princeton offense. I mean, I know you've heard me say it before, and I've been right before. I said the same thing about San Jose State. You guys laughed at me. It was a, it took a block from Jay Powell for them to win the game. So, like, you don't know what you're walking into. They haven't been as good on the road, obviously. This would be a nice one to, Again, get another road win. You, you win the games against the quad three and quad four opponents, and you're fine from here on out. It doesn't matter what you do against Colorado State at home, as crazy as that sounds. But that that's based on winning the games against the quad three and quad four opponents. I agree. Yeah. You weren't listening. What are you looking at? I'm not looking yeah. at anything. I was just posting something on social media. There oh, good. Go. What was it? For our show. Oh, what is it? I'm excited since we're doing the show. I was reposting, hey, everyone listen to our show right now. Oh, awesome. Very good. All right. So coming up at 430, we will have Carson Field, the Denver Gazette, who will join the show. Um, And also, we talked about off the top of the show. Again, these projections are out now for the 2024 season for the Padres. They're saying 80 wins. Now, again, take it with a grain of salt. Actually, 79.7 wins, John. So take it with a grain of salt. (laughs) Can you win 80? Can you win 79.7 games? Probably not. But again, The roster we like to say isn't complete, but then again, maybe it is more complete than we think, and it's complete with guys that are going to fight for jobs come next week. As we said, maybe while we're all sitting here blabbing about how they haven't got got a left fielder or a center fielder or another starting pitcher or a DH or first baseman or bench pieces, maybe they're sitting there thinking, you know what, we have that in our system and we're going to go with that route. Maybe. We're going to go, we're going we're going to be a developmental year with this club. Well, not, they're definitely not going to say that. Because, no, I know yeah, they're not. I know they're, they're not. They already haven't. Yeah, said it's, it. it's it's not going to be something um, that fans, I think, if it doesn't work out, will like. Like if this doesn't work out this year, if they have a bunch of young guys in a lot of different positions this season, and they lose, and they do win only seventy nine games this year. People are going to be pretty upset. Well, sure. Absolutely. I, mean, I think they'd be upset if they did everything. They did. They won 82 games. And you go, you look going forward, there's not time here that's given to this current regime with AJ Preller. Like, you got to win this year. You have to have better luck, I want to say, just from a standpoint of, like, hey, you can't be losing these one-run games all the time, and you have to be better with runners in scoring position. It's more skill than luck. Like, a lot of, a lot of people were blaming luck last year. I'm like, guys, the approach of this team at the plate was just god-awful at times. Like, that's not luck. That's just a horrible approach. So everything with this team has to be better and more crisp, and we'll see how it goes. But um, there's a huge risk in potentially going down the path that they're going to go down this season with a lot of young guys. There's risks both ways, truthfully. They they went for it last year, overspent, and came up with nothing. So there was risk in that. It's led to wholesale change. And then even if it is a quote-unquote development year, even if they don't say that, I think a lot of people would have told you last year was a development or developmental year for the Arizona Diamondbacks. 
And you could argue that their pieces that they developed in their system were further along than the Padres are right now. You could absolutely make that case. But there were very few people telling you, spring training, February, hey, look out for the Diamondbacks. That's a team that's going to vie for a postseason spot. That's a team that's going to make a run in the postseason. So I'm not saying the Padres are the 2023 Diamondbacks. But I'm saying there's examples of teams that didn't necessarily have a complete roster to start a year and all of a sudden exceeded expectations. And Arizona would be a good example of that last year. You hope that the Padres are that team that exceed expectations. I would even say right now, if they win 85 games, would mm -hmm. you say that's exceeding expectations? Yeah. I, based on what I know now about the team, yeah, probably. So 85 wins would be exceeding expectations. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And I think... 85 wins gets you in the postseason. And Probably. then then we definitely would say they ex exceeded expectations. It's just it doesn't feel right to say that when they have this much talent still on this team. Oh, to say that 85 wins exceeds expectations. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's, hey, that's fair. you won 85 games, you exceeded expectations. Well, they have Manny Machado, Fernando Tatis right. Jr., Xander Bogarts, Joe Musgrove, yeah. Darvish. You know, like right. That's true. Like Cam. What? Yeah. Right. It when should be the other way together. around. Like they should if they didn't have any of those guys, maybe they had two of those guys. And they won 85 games, then yeah, it's exceeding expectations. But when mm -hmm. you have that many players on your team that are that talented, 85 wins, is that exceeding expectations? The really? But the Preller special, or just like the way we think as fans, you like if tomorrow the Padres signed Cody Bellinger, there'd be widespread enthusiasm. Wow, what a huge addition. Right. But it's one player. And even if you added Bellinger to that core, like Soto was added to that core, and you've got a core of six, seven, eight. Well, the rest of the roster is 18, 19 deep. The 6, 7, as impactful as they can be, doesn't negate the importance of the other 18, 19 players. This is the problem with Preller rosters before. They're top-heavy or star-laden. You or never not can complete. build a complete roster. No. Yeah, so is this the year that it's more complete by spending less and relying on a system? I don't know. It, it doesn't necessarily scream that it is, but it seems like in previous years you get all enamored one piece here, one star there, and then you look up and it hasn't paid dividends the way you thought it would. I'm already bracing myself to see the opening day roster with like, <laughs> who do you think is going to be on it? Like, hold on, let me pull this up real quick because we talked about the Padres non-roster invites. Mm -hmm. Let me see here. Are you looking like an outfielder from that list or something? Yeah, let me, let me try to find it real quick. Okay. Uh, here we go. Like if their opening day roster, John, right, has Cal Mitchell and Bryce Johnson on it in the outfield, two guys that played in the big leagues. Okay, I'm just you think so. I, I'm, I'm yeah. I'm just prepare yourself. Prepare yourself for that right now. Like just potentially Cal Mitchell and who? Cal Mitchell and Bryce Johnson. Remember the Bryce Johnson pickup this offseason? Oh, of course. How could I forget? Remember the serious? Cal Mitchell? I remember this? where I was when they signed Cal. Mitchell Johnson. I remember when I was, I, we were sitting right here when they signed Bryce Johnson. Did they? Or yeah. Did, we were? We were. I remember that. That was, wow. that was a special day. It really was special. Did we go commercial free? Um, no, we didn't. No, we so didn't. you're saying, don't be surprised if one of those guys is an opening day starter in the outfield for the Padres? At this point in time, yes. Unless there's a, <laughs> I know Darnay likes to try to speak things into existence about putting out polls. Will there be a trade Will there today? be a move today? Right. I hope one of those days it works out for you again. It did. It, it worked did. out from the second day, I think. I know. It's it. great. And then he's trying to push his luck. He has a he has a tweet drafted already to tell me that I'm wrong. But that that you're wrong? Because I said I said probably probably not gonna happen. Gotcha. And he's like, Well, I already have a tweet drafted that says, Yeah, you're welcome if they do do that. But right. I'm just don't be surprised, guys. Bryce Johnson and Cal Mitchell. Or Cal Three and four hitters. Six one nine, bro. You guys are helicopter dads. I'm not exactly sure what that means, but I probably agree. I think I am, and I don't even know what it means. Bring up the minor league guys. Look at Machado. Manny was brought up super young. Yeah, okay. there's no direct correlation between what the Padres have in their system and Manny Machado's career. Hold like, on. we can't guarantee that Manny Machado, what he did with Baltimore, is what's going to happen with Jacob Marcy. Right? It <laughs> or, doesn't or work. Jackson if it was Merrill. as simple as that, we'd have it all figured out. Hold on. I want to look up. Because you, you you brought that up here, all right. Manny Machado, in his minor league career, mm -hmm. all right, he had nine hundred and forty one plate appearances in twenty eight games.
Interesting. He only had 23 home runs in the minors in 222 games. It's not always a straight line. No. It isn't. What was his OPS in the minor? 791. Boom. Bring up Jackson Merrill yesterday. Oh, it's over. Carson <laughs> Field, Denver Gazette gets us ready for San Diego State and Air Force tonight at 730. He'll join us next. All right, Jim's been talking about it. The big game is just around the corner, and you can play along right now on Underdog Fantasy with the Pick'em game. You pick between two to five players, select higher or lower on player stats, and if your picks hit, you can win up to 100 times your money in one single night. Yeah, John, it's legal in California, and me and John have been playing Underdog Fantasy for about a year, and it could not be easier. If you like fantasy sports, you're going to love Underdog Fantasy. It's the best and easiest way to win. So get in the game now. Go to their easy-to-use mobile app or underdogfantasy.com. Sign up with promo code John and Jim. That's J-O-N-A-N-D-J-I-M. And Underdog's going to match your first deposit up to $100. Then you're ready for the big game. Plus, they'll give you a special pick of higher than a half total yard to use on your first pick of entry. That's Underdog Fantasy, promo code John and Jim. You get your first deposit of $10 or more matched plus your special pick. Must be 18 years or older. And president of state where underdog fantasy operates. Terms do apply. Concern with your play? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.ncpgambling.org.
All right, this update is brought to you by Staples Stores. Uh, Aztecs, they're back in action tonight on the road versus Air Force, 7.30 tip-off. 7 p.m. is when our pregame cover starts right here on San Diego Sports 760. News in baseball today, Clayton Kershaw signed a one-year deal to go back to the Dodgers, and Jose Altuve just signed a five-year contract extension with the Houston Astros. Staples print big sale means the more you print, the more you save. Get $20 off your print purchase of 100 or more, 50 off your print purchase of 200 or more, and 100 off your print purchase of 300 or more. Offer ends 210.24. See staples.com slash print big for details. Print more, save more at Staples. Tonight, Air Force Academy, 7.30 Pacific. Our pregame coverage is going to begin at 7 right here on the home of the Aztecs, San Diego Sports 760. Carson Field covers Air, uh, Air Force Athletics for the Denver Academy. Right now, on John and Jim. Carson, we appreciate you taking a few minutes for us. Uh, Air Force is kind of an interesting story this year. I mean, they've struggled in the league. They do have that outlier win in Vegas where they won by 30-plus points, and they have three players that average 15-plus points per game uh just in general what do the aztec what do aztec fans need to know about tonight heading to air force to take on this falcons team hey guys well first off thanks for having me but sure. yeah i think you brought up some really good points i mean this team it has talent the issue is not talent with these guys ethan taylor regis petritus bo becker that big three alone three really good players and it's just when they're in close games they really really struggle they, I think those three and eight at this point in single digit games and the last few have been pretty ugly. You look at a 38 point loss to Boise state. That one wasn't pretty. Wyoming got away from them. New Mexico a couple weeks ago, that one wasn't pretty either. But I mean, when they execute, they're a solid team. I mean, you see what they did against UNLV, like you mentioned, that's on the road in a pretty hostile environment. So, I mean, this team, when they're firing on all cylinders, they can be solid. If you're an Aztec fan tonight, what's the one thing they should be worried about the most? Three-point shooting for Air Force? Because Air Force can shoot the ball. Is, is that a situation where if they get hot from three, that could be a problem if, for the Aztecs? Yeah, I would probably say, I mean, it's definitely not size. You look at the tallest player on this team being six foot seven. It's not the size. They're not going to out-athlete the Aztecs. But you look at the three ball, that's something Air Force typically does exceptionally. Helen Boylan made nine three-pointers in the Wyoming game last week. He's phenomenal from behind the line. Bo Becker shooting over 42% this year. Ethan Taylor, Redis Petritus, those two can shoot. So, I mean, this team, if they get hot from deep, that's how they, that's how they win some of these games. You saw that UNLV game. I believe they shot somewhere above 50% that game. They were phenomenal. And guess what? They went by a very wide margin. Carson Field with us right now, Denver Gazette against San Diego State at Air Force tonight, coming off a big win at home over Utah State. Quick turnaround Tuesday night on the road at Elevation, then Friday in Reno against Nevada. Can you can you tell you know our listeners and Aztec fans about the environment at the Air Force Academy? Right again, the elevation, the building, Clune is, is unique, right? Like what what is the what is the atmosphere like surrounding a game like this um, at the Air Force Academy? I'm not sure there is an atmosphere like the one at Clune Arena in college basketball. It shares the same field house as a lot of the training fields for like track and field stuff. And the hockey rinks for Air Force's Division I hockey team is probably 100 feet away from the basketball arena. Right. So totally unique. Um, fan support for the basketball team has been lacking in recent years, though. And it showed out for the New Mexico game. That was a pack the house night. And... Air Force fans were there. Lobo fans were there. Great atmosphere. I've heard that it's going to be a similar thing tonight. Get there early to get a good spot. Um, parking is going to be hectic. So I've heard it's going to be a better atmosphere. But on a general game, I mean, Wyoming the other night, fans turned out not great. And the only thing that makes me worry for tonight is that it's an 8.30 p.m. tip. So that could make it a little dicey. You mentioned the size of Air Force. Not really big. The thing with the Aztecs, they have a very big body down low and Jaden Ladee and one of the best players in the country. So if you're air force here, what are you trying to do to stop them? And, and what, what are the, what should the Aztecs expect? Yeah, great question. I mean, I asked Joe Scott air forces coach the exact same thing. And he pretty much said, this might be the strongest player in college basketball. 
he doesn't think that you can really stop a guy. It's more limit him. Make sure he doesn't. I mean, Levy can shoot the three ball. That's what I find so unique about him. He's great from outside, great from inside, super strong, as Coach Scott said. So they just need to take away one of those avenues, or it's going to be like Air Force has seen in other games against good big men. I mean, you look at J.C. Toppin from New Mexico, Gray Osabor from Utah State, Tyson Dagenhart from Boise State. All three of those guys put up monster numbers against the Falcons because they couldn't really stop them down low. Carson Field with us right now. Again, he covers Air Force for the Denver Gazette. San Diego State in Colorado Springs at the Air Force Academy tonight at 730 Pacific. Pre-game coverage beginning at 7. Carson, I'm just curious from like an academy perspective, the impact on all of this change in college athletics, I feel like it's even more profound at an academy like Air Force. Like what impact is NIL or not having NIL having on Air Force or the transfer portal and not having the ability maybe to bring in players via the portal? Like how does how does Air Force compete in this age of college athletics? Well, that's that's a very good question, too. I mean, some of the teams have been quicker to adapt. You see the football team winning nine games this year. Baseball has been pretty productive the last few years. But basketball really hasn't found the answer to that yet because, I mean, these players can't make any NIL money. Yes, they get some sort of contract from the military, but they, that doesn't really measure up to NIL in most cases. They can't transfer. They can lose transfers before they're juniors, but they can't get transfers. So that's two huge parts of the college landscape these days. Not having that is, I mean, it is a significant disadvantage to Coach Scott and the Air Force basketball program's credit. Um, but they're kind of they're kind of using all aspects from what I can tell to try to get people that are not necessarily as athletic or as tall. People that are long can kind of be pests down low. You look at a guy like Kellen Boylan. I think he's the epitome of what they're trying to do. A guy that's not going to have those big D1 offers, but a guy who's long, he plays fast, can shoot the three ball, do a lot of things, and play bigger than his size. I think that's kind of the blueprint that Air Force needs to take. What's your thought on the overall conference as a whole this year? Gosh, the Mountain West is phenomenal. I've seen people saying from the beginning of the year it might be a six-bid league. I didn't believe them. Still not sure it's going to be that, but I think it's at least five right now. This this conference is so good at the top, and even some of these bottom teams. I've been impressed watching teams like Wyoming, San Jose State. Their records might not show it, but these are good teams. You put those guys in the big sky, they're winning those leagues easily. And the Mountain West is just phenomenal, though. I wouldn't be surprised if someone like a San Diego State, a New Mexico, Utah State, one of those teams makes a big run in this year's dance. Do you still consider San Diego State like the top of the Mountain West Conference? Or do you think like a, you know, New Mexico or a Boise or or one of those teams uh, could potentially, you know, win the conference and overtake San Diego State this year? This conference is so crazy because anything, it seems, can happen on a given night. I still think the Aztecs, just from the history they've had in recent years, are that team to knock off. But when I've seen New Mexico, seeing them play their best basketball, that is, in my opinion, one of the top 15 teams in the nation. I think Boise State's a lot better than people realize, too. Very consistent team there. I like Utah State. I think they're more fundamental than some of these flashy teams like New Mexico. But I like their chances to do something in March. It's I think it's up for grabs, but to answer your question, I think San Diego State's still the team that made the final four last year. They're the team to beat in this conference. Carson, great stuff. Really appreciate you taking some time here today for us in San Diego. We're looking forward to tonight again. The Aztecs and the Falcons from Colorado Springs, Carson Field, Denver Gazette. Thank you, Carson. Hey guys. Take care. All right. See? Told you. I don't know what I told you, but what did you tell me? I got three scores at 15 or more points per game. And they can shoot the three. They can shoot th- second well. in the league in three-point shooting, nearly 35%. But this is the type of game you expect to see a big one from Jaden Liddy. Like, you expect yeah, to I see, like, that. a 25 and 12 game. See, he did that against San Jose State. Remember, they kept fouling him. Yeah. For, like, they, they had they, no, they, no answer. No answer at all. And they still stayed in the game. They had no answer for Jaden, yet they were still in the game. Well, maybe that's kind of the plan. Like, let Jaden cook, but stop everybody else. Maybe. And like, Hey, he can score two points at a time. We can score three. Like we're, we're not, we've already, you know, come to the realization. We're not going to be able to stop Jaden Liddy. So that's just let him and get his <laughs> and stop everyone else and try to stop everybody. Or else. do they double him like everyone else? That that will be interesting. Like, does he draw an immediate double today or do they just foul him or do they just live with it? Maybe early on. 
Uh, him we'll scoring. See. Now, San Diego State's been great from beyond the arc the last two games. So maybe you live with giving up some twos. They've hit 45% of the threes their last two games. San Diego State has. Yeah. So we'll see. Tonight, 7.30 pregame coverage at 7. On the other side, the future of sports streaming. How does it impact the Padres this season? How does it impact the way you watch the NFL in 2024 this fall after the Super Bowl? That's next on John and Jim. All right, how will you be watching the Padres in 2024? Plus, how will you be watching the NFL in 2024? That's next.
place, place, place. I have an answer for that. Okay. I don't know. Well, the answer is that's, no, that's not true. They have an answer. You were able to watch the same way you could a year ago. Well, as far as the future goes. It's the a, future. It's 2024, a, you'll be able to watch the same way as you could in 2023. The future as in not just this upcoming oh, season. Oh, 100 like, years from now. But like the next five years. Like, well, you can definitely watch on MLB.tv. Yeah. With a streaming subscription, which is what we did last year. In addition to that, they were shown locally on different networks a year ago, including your view, right? So you'll be able to watch it in 2024. Again, the Bally Sports Days are done. There's no regional network. I don't think it's a bad thing. I, I thought Bally's was complete yeah. trash. So, okay, that's one thing. But here's the deal. The future of sports viewing. ESPN announcing today that they've partnered with Fox and Warner Brothers on this app for streamers. You're going to get 15 networks on this app. ESPN Networks, Fox Networks, Warner Brothers Sports Networks. It's going to launch later this year by the fall. And you're going to be able to purchase a monthly subscription. And it can also be a part of like Hulu, for example, Max as well. So you can purchase you know, a subscription service to watch these 15 networks to watch sports beginning this fall. Because remember what people were concerned about is, well, yeah, I stream, but it's hard for me to go from like the Apple app to then like YouTube TV and then back to some other app. So this is like putting it all in one app. You get 15 networks. Those 15 networks offer all four of the major sports leagues, NFL games, right? If there's an NFL game on ESPN, you can now watch it on the app. If there's an NFL game on Fox, you can now watch it on the app. Do, would you have an appetite for that? So you're basically combining streaming and cable. You're putting it all in one app. You got 15 networks together. You're paying a monthly fee. I don't know what the number is. And now you can watch the NFL if it's on Fox. You can watch Major League Baseball if it's on FS1. You can watch the NBA if it's on TBS and so on and so forth. Because that's what's coming later this year. Yeah, I already have that app. What app is that? YouTube TV. The difference is this. Yeah, what is the difference? The that? difference is what do you pay for YouTube TV? 70 bucks a month. What if this was twenty four ninety nine? That's the difference. So you wouldn't necessarily. Let's say you're just in it for sports. Now maybe Aaron isn't. That's how I am. I mean, Kristen needs Bravo, so you have YouTube yeah. TV, and you also have name your sports you watch. YouTube right? TV is, I think, it's great, fantastic. I don't know why I didn't have YouTube TV sooner. Okay, fair. I'm with you on that. But let's say you didn't want all the other stuff. Let's say you just want Netflix for some events. That's you wanted live sports. Is, it's just always. Like you have 95 different channels and you only watched 15 Three. or 20 of them. But okay. And I know this <laughs> argument, bless you. <laughs> this <laughs> that, was, that came out of nowhere. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> yeah, it did. But this would, you know, how people have always said, like, man, this sucks. Cable, the bundle. Why can't I just get these networks? People have said that for 50 years. Why can't I just buy ESPN and not buy the entire yeah, yeah. package? So here you go. You can buy. 15 networks, you can get NFL, NBA, baseball, NHL, WNBA, World Cup, March Madness, golf. Not everything. But you get this. You couple it with your Padres MLB.tv subscription. You buy Netflix. And all of a sudden, you, you know, you were spending 100 bucks. Now you're spending 50 Yeah, but here's also the problem. You're still going to have to, like, there are some people that just want to watch sports. Yep. They don't care about Netflix care about hulu mm -hmm. i don't care about peacock paramount max disney right. plus any of that right the problem is it, it's all of these different streaming platforms mm -hmm. only give you certain things on those streaming platforms like Correct. this past postseason if you wanted to watch the chiefs dolphins game for the playoffs you need a peacock, you need a peacock. okay um disney plus has its own advantages with certain movies and tv shows and you know there's never going to be one singular streaming platform for everything that you want, I feel like. Probably true. So you're always going to have to have multiple streaming platforms. It's just how many are you going to have? Like, can, can you live with just three? Can you can you watch everything you want to watch with just three? There's some Aztec games that you have to go on ESPN Plus to watch. So you have to go there. Right. So it's like, is this about cost or convenience though? As in, do people not, okay, I'll give you an example. Aztec games, like you just said, are on ESPN plus. 
So you go there to watch this Aztec basketball game, right? But let's say at a break, you want to watch the Warriors on TNT that night. Mm -hmm. And now you got to leave the ESPN app platform and you got to go to YouTube TV mm -hmm. and click on whatever TNT. And there are the Warriors. That to a lot of people, and correct, I mean, not as much to me. I don't think it's that big of an inconvenience. A, a lot of people see that as some big inconvenience, but it's not all in one platform. Right. You got to leave one platform and go to another. This is trying to alleviate some of this as well. It's not just about, hey, you're saving money, but now as you bounce back and forth between Warriors and Aztecs, you're doing it in one app. Is okay. that a value? Um, These networks think it is for people. I mean, maybe. If you maybe it is, that just means they're banking on everyone being lazy. Yeah, Which to where, is what are, are you so are. lazy that you you know don't want to back out of one app to go into another app? That's pretty lazy. Yeah, I'm not it even is that lazy. lazy. It is, but don't you hear that complaint a lot among sports viewers? Like it's a college football Saturday. How on earth will I? Go? I'm not going to go to Hulu to watch the Pac-12 because ESPN two has the SEC. Are you really going to leave Whoa. your? Are you going to leave YouTube TV to go to a streamer to watch a football game? Well, YouTube TV does a fantastic job in quad box so we can watch four really? games at once or if you want to watch two games at once mm -hmm. or if you want to watch three games at once right and you get the option of choosing which games that's why from the NFL season I think it's fairly new what they did with how they did this this year when mm -hmm. they had the, the three box two box like, right you choose which games you wanted to watch and that was something that I think was a massive hit on YouTube TV. Mm -hmm. You can do that with all sporting events on YouTube TV now. You want to watch them over last year. Um, there was an NFL game happening during the World Series. So I watched like game side by side. five of the World Series with an NFL game right there. But that that's my point. But if but you couldn't do it if the Aztecs were on ESPN Plus on YouTube TV. Well, because you the put them all in one app. Yeah, because ESPN Plus is only on the ESPN app. Exactly. If they, if they were on ESPN2, then I could have done it. Correct. If they were on CBS Sports Network, I could have done it. Correct. But they weren't in this hypothetical. And ESPN is trying to bridge that gap, is my point. That That's what I've been told. So it's where are the Padres play. playing this year? MLB.tv. MLB.tv. Okay. MLB right, when are we going to find out how much it's going to cost? Because that's going to be the biggie. I mean, they're already, charging, month. they're already charging $90 for opening day tickets for like the last row, last seat in the stadium. Mm-hmm. Does that include an MLB.tv subscription? So I'm just wondering, like, what is the MLB subscription number? It was 20 a month last year. You say higher? I say higher. How much higher? $10. You say 30? I say $29.99. You want to make a double or nothing bet? You already owe me a sushi roll. <laughs> Do you want to? No, I don't, say, I, don't, I don't. Okay. It'll be less than $30 a month. $29.99. Right, $29.99. I think it'll be $19.99 or $24.99. Uh, let's go to Peter who wants to weigh in. 877-767-4760. Hey, Peter, you're on with John and Jim. Hey, boys. Uh, so a quick take on that. Um, you know, with the evolution of um, smart TVs and everything, and like he was just touching on about the quad box, yeah. it's not going to be long before, you know, like per, per se, I have an 85-inch TV, humble brag. Must be but nice. With that, they're going to have that where they're becoming so cheap as it is that you will have that, you know, four different boxes on a big screen TV where you could have Netflix on one, ESPN Plus on the other, Disney on the third, and you could have four shows going at once. And then you're not just coming to the app. No, I would love that. And thanks for the call, Peter. Yeah, thanks, that, that's, I would love that feature. Um, my TV is kind of older, but on a newer TV, if they add the feature where you can have like a quad box and watch four different um, streaming platforms at one time, problem solved. I think this app is trying to solve some of that. Again, it's in its infancy. It was announced today. We don't even know. We don't know what costs. We don't know what it's going to look like. Yeah. But again, a lot of people, I think, run into this issue. Like, how do I get all the sports I want without having to overcome hurdles of, like, where is this game? Yeah, but it's also, you know, we're in the ad adapt or die stage of <laughs> right. life with streaming networks and right. technology. It's like the the ways of cable and one game on television and, and all, you know, it, that, those are gone. Like mm -hmm. it, it is adapt or die. If you can't find the game on Peacock, then kind of tough luck. Right. You know, it's, right. it's, it's not going to be a situation where these sports leagues and networks say, you know what? It's, it's hard for some people to find us. So we're going to, we're not going to 
to have these games streamed or, right. or, or or different platforms, right? Like, so you're kind of saying screw the fan. No, I'm kind of saying it's it's time for everybody to, to figure it out, get into the new age. Okay. And it's unfortunate for some, but that's just the climate we're in right now. It's a, it's an adapt or die business with a lot of things like radio, YouTube, television, streaming. If you aren't up to date on all the new trends or all the new ways to watch or consume content, then you're going to be SOL. That's on you. I'm, I hate to say it, right, but, it but that's, kind, kind, of that's it kind of how it is. All right, back to projections. So what do they have to do with the Padres in 2024? On the other side, it'll be our three of John and Jim. We have Jim's back page. We have Aztecs basketball tonight, 730. San Diego State at the Air Force Academy. Pre-game coverage at 7. Hour 3, John and Jim next.
All right, this update's brought to you by Staples Stores. Aztecs back in action tonight on the road versus Air Force. 7.30 tip-off, 7 p.m. That's when our pregame coverage starts right here on San Diego Sports 760. And baseball news of the day, the Astros signed Jose Altuve to a five-year, $125 million extension. The Dodgers are bringing back Clayton Kershaw on a one-year deal. Staples Print Big Sale means the more you print, the more you save. Get $20 off your print purchase of 100 or more, 50 off your print purchase of 200 or more, and 100 off your print purchase of 300 or more. Offer ends 210.24. See staples.com slash print for details. Print more, save more, Staples. All right, San Diego and Southern California, what's going on? This is hour three of John and Jim. We should note tomorrow, by the way, Jim. Let me break some news to you. No, I know it's happening tomorrow. Okay. Well, we have a a number of guests tomorrow. Sean Lewis on National Signing Day across college football. There's a few of them, but he's going to join us tomorrow. He's scheduled to join us at 445. So Sean Lewis, San Diego State new football coach, will join us at 445. Chelsea James, Washington Post, great national baseball reporter. She's going to join us tomorrow. For so? what? Oh, sorry. I'm, my bad. Never mind. I was thinking of some. Uh, oh, you else. were thinking um, of our guest from the NFL Cynthia Network. Freeland. I'm thinking of, for some reason I yeah, thought I Cynthia need to Freeland. text Cynthia Freeland to get her on the uh, my, show. Right? My bad. Chelsea yeah. James has nothing to do with the Super Bowl. I mean, unless she's covering the A's story, I don't think she is. But she will join us tomorrow. But I'm sure she'll have perspective on the A's. Yes, definitely. We can ask her about the A's. Absolutely. And. uh also, we're going to have Padres blogger with us tomorrow, who's doing amazing, amazing work on social media. Um, Mark, Padres blogger. So he's going to be in studio. He's going to join us. We'll talk some Padres baseball with Mark tomorrow as well. We'll figure out the time on that. Uh, Aztec basketball tonight, okay, at 730. Our pregame coverage, again, will begin at 7. Am I nervous? Sure. I get nervous for all things. Are you I get as nervous, nervous across the, the road. Are you as nervous for this game as I am for the Super Bowl? <laughs> no probably no no i mean i'm reasonable with it i'm not no what was your nervousness level for the national championship game very nervous very but you know what it was almost like hayes in the barn and all right they've right. accomplished so much final and, four game versus fau because that one you're yeah. like come on you can't just get here and not win like that you gotta get just get get to the national championship um like that you gotta yeah, get, just no. get there I, I I'm say, sure I was nervous. I'm sure I was nervous. So I'm sure you're nervous. What was your feeling, if you can even remember, the final like three minutes of that game? It honestly, I wouldn't have been. I mean, like, did you I'm glad out? I wasn't calling the game in that moment because you just get so wrapped up in it. Do you know what I mean? Like it's yeah, you're not you're not it's one thing to handle are... your emotions when you're when you're calling the game and handle your emotions and there's all that going on. Like that's that's hard. So I don't remember. I was nervous. You blacked out. I was super nervous. Oh, yeah. You know, so you'll be super nervous. Yeah, but I'll have nothing to do with the game. Yeah, like, you're not you doing least, pregame. You're not doing halftime. Yeah, you were doing pregame halftime post. Yes. And you were sitting courtside with Ted and you were the engineer. True. Imagine if you. OK, let, let's put it this way, because San Diego State lost the national championship game, as we know. Let's say the Niners lose the Super Bowl and then you are the postgame host. For the Niners flagship. Could you do that? See, this is why. If you're a fan, like a hardcore fan of that team, I do feel like it's tough to, if you're doing a post game show mm-hmm. or a talk show, to really be to objective, be objective in those moments, because you're so wrapped up, because your fandom just kind of just takes over. And there's a lot of cities that have like diehard fans that, as their host, as their host, that have grown up being fans of that team as post game host or whatever the case may right. be. Right. And that's okay. That's okay. That's, that's okay. But there's almost times where you're like, I kind of want an objective opinion with also the passion. Like, can we, can you get that from somebody who is just a diehard fan to do a post game show? It's hard. I don't know. So what are you saying? You're saying that's why you couldn't do the Niners. That's why show? I couldn't do it. It'd be, it'd be very difficult for me if they won, it would be fantastic. But mm-hmm. when they lose, I'm like, it would so, just it'd be hard. In general. So let me just to bring this full circle or like to finish the theoretical. If you were like called tomorrow, whatever, 
and you're gonna go you're gonna go work for the Niners flagship. And they're like, peace out. <laughs> right. I mean, you would, could you, would you do that? Not, not to say, would you leave for that job? But like, sir, if the, if it was even in San Diego, if the job is on the table right now and you're a fan of the team and it's like pre half post or pre post stuff, would you do it? Well, no, I, I'm, I'm staying in San Diego. No, but just pretend like the, uh, that's not even, that's not my point. My point is, could you do it? I'm just telling you, it'd be hard for me to do it just for the it. Niners, like for the Niners specifically. Okay. Very hard. Okay. I get it very hard yeah because you get so wrapped up in it you're so emotionally invested in it yeah and and i think you know why people come to us for padres content is we have we're more objective we we have an objective opinion Mm -hmm. while we also are still passionate about it because we want this team to win Mm -hmm. and the passion definitely shows it's just the living and dying on every pitch that a lot of fans do you you might not hear it from us. Instead, you're hearing an a objective opinion, and some people want to just listen to fanboys, and that's fine. And some people actually just really want an objective opinion on their favorite team because they're too heated to have one if the team that they root for loses. Right. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. That is honestly one of the hardest parts of what I do with San Diego State. Brent can attest to this. Is honestly just reacting in real time. I mean, you... If you are like, if you're doing Padres, for example, there's so many games. So there's, there's highs and lows. There's crazy losses. Yeah. There's crazy wins. There's yeah. losing streaks. And there's winning streaks. And the second the game ends, like San Diego state's a perfect example. You know, you could have an unbelievable win or a, a terrible crushing loss. It's like, and then you just got to consume it all. You got to remember what happened. You got to talk about what matters to people. It's, it is a little tricky. It's hard to gauge John in the moment because he hides in sales. He doesn't yeah, sit no. in here and Correct. watch the game. Oh, yeah, so yeah, yeah. if you want to actually get his reaction, you have to kind of sneak around the corner in sales and be quiet. So he doesn't know that you're there. <laughs> Correct. Right. No, I know. That. But uh, in post, I mean, Brett, tell me I'm wrong. I mean, I basically, you know, I, I do, a, I, I have a way to bring it together and be, yeah, the, you know, the, you know the, the text line will get you riled up every oh, once yeah, in a while. Yeah, yeah. But other yeah. than that, but then again, we do that during the day as well from yeah. three to six. No, it's difficult, man. It's it's tough when you have so much invested in a team having to try to talk about it the second the game ends. Yeah. It's, really it's, it's so difficult because I'm sure there's a lot of times, even after we do Padre wrap-up shows on YouTube. Yeah. Like, I'm like, I thought about something that I didn't think about. Definitely. last night There's and then the radio show or, or, or whatnot sometimes it's hard to truly think of it all if you're so emotionally invested there's that not just think of it all to your overall point like if if the niners lose forget about you're just mad oh so you don't even want, like you don't even want to deal with it that's like, why i'm kind of glad i don't like cover the 49ers because yeah exactly be that's me. my point because yeah. i would be it, it would be hard for me to cover that team and be as objective as I like possibly be. Right. Exactly. Like I'm I'm very doom and gloom. It just doesn't work. It wouldn't work. Right. Okay. So we started the show talking about these baseball projections, which are out for 2024. Take it with a grain of salt. Okay. These same projections called Pakoda had the Padres as a 94 win team in 2023. Spoiler alert, they won in 80 games. They gave them an 88.6% chance of making the postseason. They ended up with like a one in a thousand chance of making the postseason in September. So it wasn't exactly spot on, but you fast forward a year and yes, the Padres roster isn't finished, but then again, nor are most of the teams in baseball, at least half of them. And this Pakoda, which was launched today, this projection from baseball perspective projects the Padres to win 79.7 games. So essentially go 80 and 82. It gives them a 0.8% chance of winning the division on February 6th. And it gives them a 24% chance of reaching the postseason. Now, do you think uh, these projections would change if they made a move? Because I think they would. They do every single day. And this is not a complete team. Yeah, but by any stretch. I know, but like then you ask yourself, well, is San Francisco complete? No. Right. Is are the Cubs? Well, I'm I'm just concerned about what the Padres are doing. Like I I I understand that yes, the Giants and the and the Diamondbacks are going to matter. Because those two teams are probably you're going to be fighting for, right. for a playoff spot, but uh, I'm worried about the Padres. I'm worried about their roster, mm-hmm. and right now their roster is far from complete. So with a far from complete roster, 
projections have them as a fourth place team. Mm -hmm. They could change, but how much would they truly change if they signed Jerks and Profar tomorrow? I don't think drastically. How much would they change if they signed Tommy Pham tomorrow? I don't think drastically. Yeah. So basically, still, they're kind of who they are. That kind of who they are, unless they made a big size. Well, if they signed Cody Bellinger tomorrow, right? Maybe then yeah, they'll probably up to like little. eighty-four wins, maybe. Whoa, I, eighty-three I wins. If you're yeah, at 80, maybe if you're eighty wins right now, and Cody Bellinger's what's his WAR? I mean, right. So so go up a few. Go up saying. a few, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then it would change. But as of right now, with not really any sizable moves in the horizon on the right. horizon. Um, most likely we're going to see a lot of young players this year from their system. Mm-hmm. Maybe one trade here and there for uh, maybe a starter yep. or whatever, but they, according to these projections, is how they're viewed as a fourth place team. Yeah, I mean, listen, we haven't, you know, you look at the feedback on this and like the text line or even with callers. I mean, I don't think it's overly offensive. Like, I don't think there's a lot of people out there screaming at the radio. How dare they have us as a 79.7 win team? Because you watched what happened last year. They won 82 games. And it's not as good of a team on paper. Paper doesn't determine who wins. Things can change. But we'd be lying to each other if we said this team is better on paper or has better players. Snell, Hater, Soto are better than whatever they play for. Whatever they can stand up. I don't think it's the analytics spit out 80 wins because we just won 82 games. Do you think that, I know we don't have the rock. Us. Mm-hmm. Do you think they have a better roster now? Ah, that is a great question. At the start of the season, you know, you got to take so many factors into consideration to start 2021. Like the age of the team, Tatis before all these injuries, suspect like all these factors that would go into it. Expectations heading into 2021 and projection sites would have been pretty high, right? Like if we looked at Pakoda in 2021. Off that fake season mm-hmm. where the Padres were, it would have told you what they're going to win ninety games. That 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 twenty twenty one team wasn't the most talented team. They they did have obviously Machado and Tatis, but he was dealing with the sublux shoulder a lot. They did have Tatis was, but he raked in. I know he did, and he overcame a lot of injuries. And imagine if he was actually healthy. Yep. Um, you know they still had Blake Snell. They still had Joe Musgrove and and you Darvish. Those are the first. That was the first year they had the big those big three there. Blake Snell did not have a good 2021. Pakoda, 96 and 66, 2021. 96 and 66. Now, they missed on that. They missed a little bit. Okay. How many games did they win? In 2021? Yeah. 79? 79 and 83? I think they did. I mean, the wheels completely fell oh, yeah, off. Just, yeah. Yeah. So, look, they as as this uh, texter here, 360, says, it's good that the Padres don't have the hype like they did last yeah. year. Look what happened in 2022. When they went to the NLCS, people forget we still have Machado, Tatis, and Bogarts. We all, I get that. I understand that. And and if those players perform, then that's going to go a long way for this team. If 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 Machado and Tatis and Bogarts are all stars this year, I would think the Padres would be in a pretty good position to be fighting for a wild card spot. Won't do yeah, you, yeah. you agree? Mm-hmm. So yes, that is that is true. Yeah, but we also do know it's not just about one or two or three players in baseball. Mm-hmm. It yep. never is. Um, if it was, then the Angels would have made the postseason for the last ten years. Right, but they didn't because they their GM and their team couldn't build a cohesive roster. They had a couple of superstar players that would have crazy MVP seasons, and their team would win seventy eight games. Mm-hmm. You know, so if Machado and Tatis have crazy good seasons this year. Who says they're, they're that they're not going to win more than you know that they're going to be that yeah. that that team that wins ninety games? Like maybe they could be a team that wins seventy eight games. We've seen it before, but I do think this team goes as Machado goes when he's True. engaged and he is playing at a high level. They more often than not win a lot of games. You, you make or at it, least they're in contention. You make a good point though in twenty twenty one because I'm just like thinking back. Sure, you had like young. Musgrove, Snell, Darvish, like the younger versions, a little bit. First had, year of Hassan Kim, and, yeah, and but and, but Tatis again, like, and I'm just trying to. It's interesting. It would project 96 wins. But I started because out you hot. didn't have Soto, you didn't have Hader, but you had Snell, and he didn't pitch well, right? So I'm just. Uh, it is interesting that it was projected. They did. They were red hot through 50 games. They were one of the best teams, if not the best team. They in were baseball. 37 and 23, I think, at one point. Well, that's what they finished 2020. 
So I don't know. If oh, they, no, no, no. Yeah. yeah, they had the same record. Did they at one point? At one okay, point. so 60 games in, they were one of the best teams in baseball. Yeah. They were at one point 15, 20 over, and they finished four games under right. 500. Yeah. So at one point. Y- you hope that this team has their top players perform. Yep. You got to get out to a fast start. I think that's the biggest key for this season. Yeah, I, you know, I, I agree with I, that. I, I know it's a long year. It, it's baseball. We all understand that. It's a grind. It's a marathon. But I do think for just the psyche of this team, after what happened last year and what's happened this offseason, arguably the worst offseason in franchise history, to get out to a good start is, I think, crucial for this team's potential success this season. You're talking about April. So let's just say you fast forward to the end of April, um, and obviously they start actually in March. But like, let's say you're 30 games in and you're 17 and 13 or 18 and 12, as opposed to the opposite, 13 and 17 or... 12 and 18 like could that be a, a difference maker again 2021 good start didn't finish it off um so yeah i mean i'm with you though i think they need to get off to a better start i, I just i really don't know what to expect i think that i said this a couple of weeks ago maybe a couple of months ago i know what you're gonna i said this you're gonna read in these baseball magazines they're the fourth best team in the division yep you're gonna see sites like pakoda fan graphs wherever say they're the fourth best team in the division. I knew this was going to happen, mm-hmm. and that's where they are. That doesn't mean it's where they're going to finish. No. I just knew that those crazy expectations from last year have been lowered drastically. And to the Texter's point, to your point, to maybe everyone's point, maybe it's great that they have not low expectations, not like no expectations, just lowered expectations. Not none. Maybe it will help. Right. Maybe Mike Schultz will help a lot. Maybe. You know, maybe one of these young players that's put in a position of playing a lot will actually hit. Maybe there's hopefully their stars will perform. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a lot of possibilities that could happen. Um, it's just hard thinking about it when their roster is this incomplete still. Mm-hmm. You know, we'll have a better picture closer to March 22nd when they play the Dodgers. They play March 20th or sorry, March 20th. 22nd is the start of that's like the damn right, fan right, fan. Right. No, fan fest. Fan is fest that is the 23rd, uh, 24th, 24th, maybe. 24th, 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 yeah. so Sunday, 20th, 20th, 20th. Um, we'll know more obviously then, but um, as of right now, you're like, okay, uh, we're going to project this team to be a fourth place team when they have no left fielder. <laughs> yeah, man, the, the, the overreaction or reaction come March 20th is going to be so phenomenal because we overreact with opening day and yeah. there's a there's a game the next day but these two games you're sitting on for a week like there's a week from march 21st until their next regular season game march 28th like the reactions are going to be like they're going to be fast and furious what people are saying about this team after those two days in korea i know that and that's going to be a complete overreaction like when you say hey they need to get off to a fast start you're not talking about korea no nobody's saying they have to go two and zero in korea they have to go one and one i mean that's that's utter insanity. Yeah, I'm talking about the first month, month of the yeah. year. But the truth is, people will react to what happens in Korea. I know they will. Yeah. They go 2-0. Oh, my gosh. If they go 0-2, oh, my gosh. Because look what happened in 2022. They got out to a fast start. And then they yep. played 500 baseball the entire way, west of the rest of the season. Mm-hmm. But guess what? That fast start was carried them. Ca- what carried them to a playoff spot. Right. So, you know, an 89 wins. So... It, for you know, we had this discussion last year and it was got heated about these games, these games don't matter at the start of the season. Mm-hmm. They matter and they matter a lot because right. if you get yourself in a hole with how little margin of error this team has this season, you're you're gonna be climbing uphill all year long. Mm-hmm. And is this team built to climb uphill? I don't think so. I'm with you on the margin of error thing. Like, I feel like you're going to really feel it this year. If they're squandering anything, you're going to sense it. Like, they had that game. They had that opportunity. Yeah. Like, you got to capitalize. Uh, a year ago, they weren't good with leads. Because what did we say all last year? This team has the talent to go on a huge run. Mm-hmm. Now, they went on a run at the most irrelevant time possible. Yeah, like September 15th. You know, when they were completely out of it and nobody cared anymore. And they were playing AAA teams. But... That's what we said all last year. Like they had the talent. And that's what they were saying. Right. We can rip off eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 wins in a row here. I don't know if we can say that about this team as of right now before we see it right. take place, before we see it with our own eyes. Could they, could they be a team that does that? Like 
potentially, but I don't think we can say that right now of, of with the talent they have on this roster and the amount of holes they have to be a team that the talent will take over and they're going to win 15 of 18 at, at some point in the season. Pakota agrees with you. I know they he does. see the Padres as a 79.7 win team. On the other side, five days out from Super Bowl Sunday, what's everyone talking about? We have that for you on the other side. Plus, Jim's back page coming up. Aztecs basketball at 7.30 from Colorado Springs against the Air Force Academy with pregame coverage at 7. You're listening to John and Jim. All right, lower mortgage rates are here, and smart homeowners are wiping out all their credit card debt with help from Loan Pronto. Hey, guys, it's Schaefer. Right now, Loan Pronto has a cash-out refinance rate of just 5.49%. That is a huge drop. So you can get refinanced now, get cash out of your home's equity to wipe out all those credit cards and other high-interest loans. You can save hundreds every month with lower payments, or if you still have a mortgage rate in the threes, you can use Loan Pronto's Equity Express line of credit. Just get the cash you need and leave your primary mortgage intact. Loan Pronto can get you fifty, one hundred, even two hundred thousand dollars in just a matter of days. Bottom line is this: Loan Pronto. They've got several options to help you erase debt and take control of your finances. Call today. You could even skip your next two mortgage payments. Call Loan Pronto now. Here is the number: six one nine two zero seven forty three thirty six. Again, six one nine two zero seven forty three thirty six or LoanPronto.com. Write this down, 619-207-4336. Equal housing lender, NMLS, 1661781. 5.49% is 6.39% APR, subject to lender approval.
All right, this update is brought to you by Staples Stores. Aztecs back in action tonight as they take on Air Force on the road. 7.30 tip-off, 7 p.m. is when our pregame coverage starts right here on San Diego Sports 760. And baseball news of the day, the Astros signed Jose Altuve to a five-year contract extension, and the Dodgers are bringing back Clayton Kershaw on a one-year deal. Staples Print Big Sale means the more you print, the more you save. Get $20 off your print purchase of 100 or more, 50 off your print purchase of 200 or more, and 100 off your print purchase of 300 or more. Ends 210.24. See staples.com slash print. For details, print more, save more at Staples. Out of high school, did you know his recruiting ranking, 24-7 sports? He was uh, not that highly rated. He was the 839th most player in his class. Is that good? I mean, he... I don't know. I don't think so. He was a three-star recruit at Rivals 24-7 and ESPN. But Was that overall or just quarterbacks? No, that's overall. 839th best that's player a lot of in his class. There. I know. Six years later, he will be starting in Super Bowl 58 in Las Vegas, Nevada, Sunday afternoon, 3.30, Pacific kickoff. Against Patrick Mahomes, arguably the best quarterback of all time in the history of the game. Although Mahomes did say this week that he doesn't even consider himself in that conversation with Brady as of yet. See, so anyway, the, that's your quarterback matchup. Yeah, I know, John. The uh, <laughs> <laughs> the week before Super Bowl is always just, can we get to the freaking I game? I mean, I, I looked at, so I've been Googling this like all day, Super Bowl headlines. Today, it's Niners defense <laughs> vows to be better after call out. Well, yeah. Uh, Chiefs read on retirement. Today's not the day. Field issues yesterday, right? Was the headline. Oh, the field's too soft for the Niners. Yeah. Um, somebody asked Patrick Mahomes for his best Kermit the Frog impression. And he said, here it is, me talking. I'm just talking. Yeah, that was kind of funny. Those are like your top headlines. And the A's, may uh, the mayor of Las Vegas yeah. saying that we don't really want the A's. Yeah, I, for both teams. Are, are we alive back there? <laughs> exactly. I love that soundbite. Um, for both teams, you kind of want it to be as quiet as possible, honestly. But you want the lead up, the lead up. Mm -hmm. You don't want anything crazy to jump out. You don't want a Barrett Robin situation. You don't want a, oh, this guy was at a downtown Las yeah, Vegas strip club morning, and yeah. got arrested or caused a, you know, ruckus or whatever the case may be, like a, a casino. Mm -hmm. You want it to be as quiet as possible. And you really want the stories coming out to be these stupid stories. Like, Someone asked today, Brock. Someone asked Brock Purdy today, "Hey, um, what do you do? You think you look like Lee Harvey Oswald?" And he's like, "What? Why would someone ask that?" And by the way, once you see it, you can't unsee it. Really? Yeah. When you look at pictures, but is it a serious kind of question? It. Like, was that oh, like a no. legitimate question? Then so, why is it? Then why do they even have media availability if you ask about Kermit the Frog and Lee Har Harvey Oswald? It's Super it's Bowl. It's the Super Bowl. That was like Jimmy Kimmel's big thing during Super Bowl. I don't know. If it still does right. it, but he used to send. Uh, Guillermo, the security still guard, him there. to go there and ask stupid questions. Right. So. Okay. Like another question today was asked. To... I won't be surprised if he's the one that asked Purdy if he looked like Lee Harvey Oswald. One of the questions was asked, or to, to a couple of Niners players, um, would you get a tattoo of Brock Purdy's face on you anywhere on your body if it meant a guaranteed Super Bowl win on Sunday? I mean, the answer probably from the players, yes. yes. Uh, yeah. Every guaranteed time. win? Yeah, guaranteed win. No, like he, so Hell, Jim would get a Brock Purdy tattoo if it meant they would win. 100%. Forehead? No. Just in time right for my the neck. wedding? Neck? Right, right in my neck. Neck right tat? There. Neck tat, yeah. Oh, okay. Right right where Cody Rhodes would put it. Right yeah, the front Cody of Rhodes neck. tattoo right there, and then have a, the American flag. That please. would be good for the wedding pics. I'm sure Aaron would love oh, she that. Would love it. She's like marrying both you and Brock Purdy. The 839th best player in the class of whatever. He was the, um, what was it? High school player of the year in Arizona. Like, apparently they didn't really think much of that 24-7 sports, I guess. If he was ranked 839. Is that I a mean, shot at Arizona? I, yeah, that is interesting. Where was um, Patrick Mahomes ranked in high school? Probably highly. I, that's a good question. We went to Texas Tech. Yeah, it's a good point. He was really good there. Um, that's a great question. But, but, but does anybody go and say, man, that Patrick Texas Mahomes Tech. college football career was point. amazing. No, what was his record? Like 500? It's a good point. He was the 398th prospect wow. in the 2014 recruiting class. That's amazing. That's amazing. 
Just goes to show these things don't predict. Pakoda, you're not. Pre- you can't. You can't predict this stuff. What a loser! He's only the 82nd best player in the state of Texas. That is crazy. Hmm. You know, wow, it is wild. Uh, by the way, really good text here, or an interesting text we can react to. Seven zero four seven zero. You can start your message with the word team eight five eight. All of these sites that picked the Padres to win it all last year just pissed because the team made them look so bad. They could have kept Soto and Hader and Snell plus added Otani, and they still would have been picked third just out of spite. So are these analytical sites slanted against the Padres because they've missed the mark so often? No, these aren't opinion-based sites. Right, this is like simulations, right? <laughs> right. They just plug the players in, and yeah. then the simulation spits like, out it's numbers. It's not like they get a bonus if they're you know, more yeah. correct. So it doesn't have to do with that. No, it's that not, they missed the mark last year. It's not Ken Rosenthal making these the projections. Mm-hmm. It's... Like, like a computer, a computer, and it's based on numbers and it's based on rosters and it's based on the players on the roster, right? There's no bias here. No, the truth is, if the Padres would have added Otani, their numbers would look better because the simulator would have thrown Otani's numbers into the system, you know, in the system, and all of a sudden they're going to win 90 games. By the way, if they kept Soto, Hater, and Snell and added Otani, um, be, they would probably shape. be favored to be right there with the Dodgers, yeah, exactly. Uh, just like they were last year and the year before that, right? Right next to the Dodgers. 2021. I think in some places they were they were ahead, ahead of the Dodgers in projections last right. year. Right. So sorry, 858 number. There's no bias when it comes to uh these type of projections. Maybe from certain people like Ken Rosenthal, you could say he has a bias, or or Bob Nightingale has a bias, mm-hmm. but when you're looking at these projections here, it's it's ju- it's based off of numbers alone and but, the roster. I agree with you. All right, this week for San Diego State, two road games, right? Air Force tonight, seven thirty, right here. Friday night, Nevada. By the way, you have a short show Friday. Did you have any contact after really that? Really short. Do you know what time the game is Friday? Friday? Yeah. Five thirty. Five. It's close. Which means our <laughs> pregame coverage will begin so, at four thirty. Right, because the team's on the road. Yes, they're playing Nevada on the road. Um, so that means you're done at four thirty on Friday. So either tell Aaron if you want to see her then, or don't tell Aaron, and you have ninety minutes to yourself. Well, it's perfect. On We're going out to dinner Friday night. Oh, shocking! <laughs> it's been so long. You guys go out to dinner like, yeah. every night. Do you? Ha- how do you have money? I don't. Is it on your registry, the <laughs> the dinner? So we didn't go to sushi last night. What are you talking about? You said you were going to. I know, but the thing was we didn't want it was raining like heavily. I know it called me soft. It's okay, Fletch, it's fine, whatever. Mm-hmm. But um since we're in IB right or Imperial Beach, taking an Uber to downtown to the sushi place, and then Uber back, we're just like, oh, we don't trust, we don't want to do it. We just don't want to okay. do it. Why so- didn't you drive? Because there's raining? no parking where okay. this place is at. Okay. It's in Little Italy, like zero parking. Gotcha. And it was pouring and we didn't want to do it. Makes sense. Didn't want to deal with it. So we Uber just went. Eats? No, we went to Brigantine down the road. Oh, man, you were slumming it. Because <laughs> one of the nicest restaurants. And it was happy hours, $7 apps all night long. Great. Congratulations. I know. So you're telling me, like, oh, you've missed your big Dude, money bags over you here. You went out. What was last night? So we, we, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday to eat. And now Friday. Did I go Friday night? You said you did. Where did I go Friday night? Um, you had yes, you went out Friday. It was the start of the big birthday extravaganza. <laughs> Where did I go? Uh, ask Aaron. I'm pretty sure you did. If you went, go back and look at. Like, no, I think we went Saturday. Okay, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. So where are you going Friday anyway? <laughs> to the sushi place that we're gonna go. That we were gonna go last night. <laughs> you guys spent. I wonder what percent of your money you spend on food. We it's got to be a huge percent. No, we eat a lot at home. Do we you? spend a but it's still boatload food. of money on groceries. Yeah. But as far as eating out goes, this weekend was kind of one of those abnormal weekends. Could we don't you guys live weekend. off of my food budget? What's Could your you food live budget? Off like What's your food budget? Probably a third of what you guys is. No, is. what is do you what is your food budget? Like per week? Maybe a hundred dollars if that no. fifty to hundred. Well, because no, we can't do that. Um well there also there's two of that. Two of us. Hundred bucks for well, one that, per- that includes peanut. Yeah, and okay. Yeah, but Aaron has a more of a like a palate or more of an appetite. Probably eats more than peanut. The have you bought dog, dog food lately, John? It's I know it's not cheap. Dude, dog food not is cheap. oh my god. Dogs ben, aren't cheap. Bentley's dog food's like 
almost 200 bucks yeah, especially my bougie ass dog only wants to eat that fresh pet stuff that's yeah. same thing with our dog well, you're, why don't you take your dog out to sushi with you on Friday? And maybe we will It'll be cheaper than whatever you're feeding uh, maybe Family. maybe we will yeah i don't even know who we got there anyway friday 5 p.m san diego state nevada here was my question would you sign up for a split right now of nevada and air force no no i'm with you no chance no i'm with you no you, you gotta chance. get greedy here because if you win tonight and you're a heavy favorite then you got a chance at a sweep so i'm with you you gotta be thinking about getting both these to win the regular season title you got to think about getting both of these for san diego state all right pregame coverage is seven tip off at 7 30 jim's back page next All right, Jim's back page. That's next.
I mean, Ben Fletcher will have the countdown to tip off coming up at 7 p.m. tonight. Jim will be out of dinner for seven. No, I won't. For seven months of kids. Seven thirty, San Diego State and Air Force. We're getting officials at time. Somewhere in that seven thirty, right? Uh, Eight thirty Mountain, kind of a late tip. San Diego State trying to again win on the road in the league after a big win on Saturday against Utah State at the Ahas Arena. How are you feeling about the back page right now? Feeling awesome about it. I have some good stuff on the back page today. All right, let's get to it. When's the last time anybody's here, anybody on the show has eaten at Burger King? John, you're out of the equation. Never. <laughs> mm, four years. It's been a while for me. Yeah, you maybe, always say Maybe that. like a random road trip I was on and there was like a Burger King and I ate. I just I, can't remember. I used to when I lived off the 94 towards downtown. A store I would have to go to was off the 94 and you would pass that burger king that was in like oh, Lemon yeah, Grove. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so i would stop at the burger king when i was coming back from said store but since i moved now i don't ever go into that part of the town so okay well but i like burger king burger king is offering one lucky and creative fan one million dollars if they create a brand new whopper sandwich that's selected by burger king Ooh, I like that. The chain said that uh, contestant that the contestant is the first time. Let me, let me, let me start over. <laughs> the chain said that the con the contest is the first time Burger King has put the sandwich in the hands of its guests. So, like, hey, we our marketing department is not good. Basically, you guys figure this out. What do you want? Like, it's going to be the the Whopper with French fries on top. Yeah, you have to follow the California Whopper. Right. Customers can enter. Uh, their name into a drawing mm -hmm. um, that uh, will be open on March 17th. So that's when the mm -hmm. the drawing can happen. Um, if you are selected, uh, then you create your ideal Whopper, which will have up to eight toppings on it. The finalists will be selected and invited to Burger King's headquarters in Miami, where the group will have the opportunity to refine their concepts before they appear on menus nationwide for a limited time this year now what would you put on your me impossible whopper john i mean i don't hate the idea of like guac and fries okay i figured you'd say huh? tofu or something i'd say guac fries a thousand island dressing so it'd be a big mac with fries and guac on it what without, do you think the, without the missing piece that, of bread is that worth a million bucks no so it says okay. here guests will then have a chance to try out the three final Whopper creations and vote on their favorite million dollar Whopper. The finalists who received the most votes taking home the $1 million prize. Burger King says that its contest also utilizes artificial intelligence. After submitting <laughs> their million dollar Whopper idea contest entry with the power of artificial intelligence, they will receive a preview AI version of their flame grilled creation to which they can then add a personalized AI generated jingle and thematic background, the company that explained. So, you know that commercial Whopper, 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 Whopper? No? Yes. Brett knows. Great. So, the final image or video can then be shared across their social media platforms. Yeah, how creative can you really get? It's a burger. Well, here's, here's an example. All right. You have. A beef patty mm -hmm. with candied bacon, crispy onions, a garlic aioli, and sweet bacon jam. They probably already do that. I'm just saying, like, here, here's an example. Right. Of okay. what, like. So I could choose your own Burger King adventure. Yeah. So whoever comes up with the best new Whopper idea. A million bucks. million bucks from Burger King. Did you get a free burger, too? Probably. You should. Probably get a free burger as well. Okay. That's great. What else do you have? <laughs> What's this have to do with Cody Rhodes? Nothing. There's nothing new in the Cody Everything. Rhodes. Everything. There's okay. nothing new in the Cody Rhodes situation at all. Okay. When there when there is news, I will let you'll you know. report on it. I will report we'll, on we'll, it. We'll break right into whatever we're talking yep. about. Yeah, breaking news, uh, everybody. Um so the Super Bowl in Vegas this year, suites are insane. And for a suite, the cost is uh, a cool two point five million dollars. <laughs> 
Well, not for all. So where is there a two point five million? Dollar? This is a luxury suite that comes with a two point five million dollar <laughs> price tag. Okay. Now the in this article it says um, it is fully stocked with the finest grub. That's that better be really good food. Here's the food in the press box. That's going to cost you two point five million dollars in the suite, right? The suite, excuse okay. me, sweet, sweet. Surf and turf buffet with wagyu beef and lobster okay. and carne asada fries. Sounds nice. Seafood stuffed potatoes, bacon wrapped hot dogs, bacon. Pop- popcorn, cheesesteak. What is this? Cheesecakes. A year's salary. And and also you get a, a full bar with a bartender. Oh, this is a suite at the stadium. Yeah, I thought you were saying this is like a hotel suite. Oh no, 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 that's no, so no, much no. money. For the Super Bowl. Just the game is two point five million dollars. Just, just the game, John. Just the game. Oh, two point five million dollars. Hell no. And the food, as I yeah, just said, there cheesesteaks is not like yeah. that special. How many people does it like seat? How many people can I have with me in my two point five million dollars suite? Twenty. So two point five divided by twenty is I don't know one hundred twenty five thousand dollars a ticket. For Lobster, some, surf, and turf at a but, football game isn't special. For some bacon wrapped hot dogs and popcorn. popcorn. Bacon wrapped hot dogs and popcorn and popcorn. a full service bar. Oh, full service bar? Yeah. Oh, at 125K, you can't with, go wrong. With, with your own bartender. Who on earth would do that? Mm, someone very wealthy. Either someone very wealthy or. Did, did McCaffrey's girlfriend buy one for his mom? Yeah. Is, is, did she? Yeah. His uh, supermodel super yeah. girlfriend or supermodel super fiance. I had to like look it up because I was like, I don't, I've never heard of her. And it's like, Wait, how did she afford that? She really spent two million because McCaffrey's mom couldn't afford to get a suite to right. watch him play in the Super Bowl. So she shelled out the two and a half mil or whatever and got a suite for his mom and the family. Wow. Good for her. Yeah. So there you go. And right now, the ticket prices for the Super Bowl, they're not going down. They are staying strong no, not. at around six. Popcorn's included. Sweet. Easily the most priced out ticket, highest price ticket in the world. I don't know what to say about that. Can you imagine just like walking the strip like, hey, I need two. Oh, two for 12. Oh, yeah, let me just pull out 12 today. Imagine the scalpers. Right? Like, anybody need tickets? That? Anybody tickets? Yeah. Okay, but it'll be yeah. 12 grand. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, I'm not doing that. I, mean, I cannot imagine playing six out cards for a game. I just can't. I'm sorry. I just can't. All right. Good job for back page. 2.5 million for some hot dogs and hot food. And some surface purpose in there. And a Bud Light. Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot of money. And and your own bathroom. Congratulations. Yeah. It's It's probably worth a bathroom. Cats out to tip off 7 p.m. Tip off 7.30. San Diego State Air Force tonight. Myself and Ben Putt. 